Bitcoin is $505. Antiwar.com reports Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al Malaki, after a multi day attempt to retain power that included deploying tanks into the Baghdad Green Zone and filing lawsuits claiming constitutional violations, has finally agreed to step down and end his eight years in office. Maliki gave a speech yesterday announcing he is stepping down and endorsing his successor, Prime Minister designate Haider Abadi, who is also a member of the Dawa party. Maliki has maintained that as the Dawa leader, only he was constitutionally allowed to be Prime Minister designate, though his overwhelming unpopularity, even within his own party, meant he had no chance of forming a government. That task will now fall on Abadi, who seems to have enough votes to do so. Whether Abadi will be any different in practice than Maliki was is another matter entirely. Both are members of the same political movement with roughly analogous backstories, and the primary difference is that Maliki has fallen out of favor both domestically and internationally after eight years of failures, while Abadi is, at the very least, a fresh face. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The New York Times reports President Obama on Thursday called for an end to the violence in Ferguson, Missouri, decrying actions by both the police and by protesters. Hours later, the Missouri Governor Jay Nixon ordered the State Highway Patrol to take over security operations from local law enforcement. Clashes between heavily armored police and furious protesters in Ferguson have defined the aftermath of a police officer's fatal shooting of an unarmed teenager on Saturday, and the latest moves come as federal and state officials scrambled to quell the growing crisis. Alarm is rising across the country at images of a mostly white police force in a predominantly African-American community aiming military-style weapons at protesters and firing tear gas and rubber bullets. Criticism of the police response, already heavy because officials have refused to name the officer involved in the shooting, intensified after two journalists were arrested Wednesday night while recharging their phones and working on articles at a local McDonald's. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports the Obama administration has halted missile shipments to Israel and a huge new diplomatic row, which some officials are calling a very serious rupture is emerging after the Wall Street Journal revealed Israel was taking U.S. weapons to use in Gaza without the permission of the White House. According to U.S. officials, the Israeli Defense Ministry was getting arms directly from the Pentagon stockpile in their country without asking either the White House or the U.S. State Department's permission. This this was done in spite of the arms coming concurrent with direct U.S.-Israeli talks on another $225 million in U.S. funding for their Iron Dome system. One U.S. diplomat noted, We were blindsided, while others said they were particularly concerned that Israel took artillery instead of precision-guided arms to use during their bombardment of civilian areas of Gaza. It was particularly galling that Israel took the arms without asking the White House, since the billions of dollars in annual U.S. aid has essentially bankrolled the entire Gaza war, and having burned through all their U.S.-provided arms and ammo, they simply went to the Pentagon warehouse and grabbed some more. Pentagon officials are trying to downplay the incident, saying that Israel didn't need permission of the White House or State Department to take the arms. Whether or not that is strictly true is unclear, but doing so was clearly irksome to the administration. In addition to stopping the shipments, the State Department announced a new review of all arms shipments to Israel, though they insisted the timing of this was coincidental and was simply a function of concern about the invasion of Gaza. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
This week, badly shaken researchers reported observing an osprey stalking, killing, and devouring an adult male lion in what is being called a massive food chain shakeup. Confirmation of the three pound marine bird consuming the 400 pound feline has biologists scrambling to determine the new predator prey connections between the planet's billions of organisms. We seem to be experiencing some sort of cross species dietary free for all. Scientists say that the killing of the healthy, full grown lion by a typical osprey specimen has lent credibility to recent reports of a deer seen grazing on a nest of squirrels in Wisconsin, as well as a claim made by a group of Japanese fishermen who say they witnessed 300 million krill devouring a 40-ton humpback whale. In other news, NASA acquires the moon for an upcoming Kennedy Space Center exhibit. A radio DJ invites the whole town to some bullshit, and assuming the many universes theory of quantum mechanics is accurate, the review you've just seen will remain relevant in another reality for all eternity. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial toll-free to this number, 855-450-FREE. That number is brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Username here is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request. It will be accepted. I just hit accept on somebody's request right there. So once you're accepted, it's easy for you to call us on Skype from that point forward. Uh, with you in the studio tonight, Ian here. Alan. And Daryl. And, of course, we'll jump right into uh, some pretty important news, which I actually haven't yet covered uh, while I've been here. It was Tuesday night. Daryl, you were here uh, filling in for me, and y'all covered this Ferguson situation. Yes, and apparently things are just getting worse there. Have you seen updates from today? Because I'm still, I have to admit, I'm still kind of catching up. The, the last updates that I saw were from last night, and I had covered one of the stories on my daily five-minute newscast this morning, mm -hmm. and apparently there's been some kind of state of emergency called the governor out there in Missouri, Jade Nixon, has called like the National Guard to come in to help, you know, uh, Patrol the streets. One of my Facebook friends who lives in the St. Louis area reported that she was at one of the protests last night and that nothing bad happened okay. at the protest that she was at. But that doesn't mean that bad things didn't happen at another protest. And I know Wednesday night things got really crazy. So before we get a little bit further into this, can somebody just give a brief synopsis or of what happened because I don't I don't believe I'm fully up to date on the Ferguson situation. Okay, so on Saturday, nearly one week ago, would have been, you know, 6 days ago uh today, there was a young black man, 17 years old, who had I've you know, seen 18, but okay. All of the reports that I saw that, you know, are the one shot by the police, right? Uh Yeah, he okay. he was shot by the police. Uh, the age that I've seen, his parents both mentioned, you know, he was 17. Gotcha. Uh, Not that it really matters. It might have been something to where, you know, like his birthday was coming up and he was about to turn 18. Okay. Uh, but, you know, either way, 17 or 18, he was, you know, right around that age. Had graduated high school a couple of months ago, was set to have begun college on Monday. And there was some interaction with a police officer, and depending on which account you believe, and there's two accounts, the two living witnesses that saw the account or saw the interaction have one account, and they both agree on that account. The police officer has another account of what happened, but the one thing that all of them agree on is that Michael Brown was 35 feet away from the police officer. He was running away from the police officer when the police officer shot him in the back shot and the killed back. him. Wow. Uh, and this I was heard, allegedly over uh, him conducting a robbery? Is that right? Uh, that just came out today okay. that there was some kind of robbery. Yeah, I heard there was footage of Michael Brown, the victim in this case, uh, robbing some sort of convenience store, allegedly. Yeah, I had not heard that until today. 
Right. I did, you would think. I did see pictures from that video, and it looks like he was harassing the uh, the clerk there. So yeah, I don't know what. Uh, you know, right. I I haven't read any detail on that story. I just saw the the screenshots and the headline there. But presuming he had a, a weapon with him, I'm sure there. He was to be... unarmed. Okay, he was unarmed. The police admit that he was unarmed. Well, even if he did have uh, a weapon and was threatening the clerk with the weapon. I don't think it's appropriate to shoot somebody in the back as from they're 35 away, feet away. No, as that seems away from very cowardly. Like, I I don't believe that something like that warrants a death sentence. But it's probably legal, as I understand it. A uh, the police have some sort of rule that says that if they're in pursuit of what they believe to be a felon, or if you know somebody who has just committed a felony, obviously they're not a felon until they're convicted. Right. But if if the police officer determines that there's a felony in progress or has just happened, that they have the ability to shoot to kill. And so odds are good that this officer, and I believe that the information about the officer has recently been released. They were trying yes. to keep that under wraps, and I and think it, Anonymous got involved in that. Uh, I, I believe, based on you know the order of the way that I saw the various reports come out today, it was after Anonymous released the identity of the police officer that the, well, he was part of a robbery came out. Mm-hmm. So... It was never mentioned from Saturday until Friday morning. It was never mentioned that there was supposedly a robbery. The robbery only wound up getting mentioned after the identity of the police officer came out. In order, as I'm guessing, to sort of justify the actions by the police officer. One would think that if there was a robbery that had happened immediately prior to this, that it would have been in the initial police report. Hmm. Because remember, about two and a half years ago here in Keene, there were the two guys that, or it might have been three guys, that yeah. uh, allegedly broke into a computer store here in Keene. And one of the guys got captured on the scene. Somebody else was fleeing the scene in a motor vehicle. Right. And then got shot in the back of the head by the Keene police. In the back of the throat, but yes. Okay, I heard head, but still, you know, Shoot head, neck area. Yep. He, he was shot from behind and died. And they made sure to put in their police report, you know, fled the Fleeing. scene of yeah. a burglary. One would think that if Michael Brown had fled the scene of a burglary or something that was alleged to have been a burglary, it would have been in the initial police report. But... You know, that's neither here nor there at this point. The uh, community went and had a candlelight vigil on, I believe it was late Saturday, early Sunday. Mm -hmm. And there were people that were saying some unpleasant things, you know, kill police. And I don't agree with that. You know, I, I don't support that sentiment. But if you want to go have a vigil of, hey, you know, like, hold this guy accountable for killing someone. And there have been people that that's their whole purpose of going out. Other people are going out and just starting to loot stores that had absolutely nothing to do with the incident. Well, there's so many different aspects of this to, to talk about. I mean, I understand how difficult it can be when you're doing activism and the, and the people who aren't looting are the ones doing the activism right. here, going out and protesting, candlelight vigils, things like that. Once something becomes past a certain size, once it grows to the point of having you know 50 people, 25 people maybe even, uh, the more people that are involved, the more likely someone's going to show up and do something stupid. Right. Uh, someone's going to show up and do something dangerous and you know destroy property. And then, of course, it makes everybody look bad because people think in groups. So th- right, we've, we've encountered in, this in Keene. Once you're in that group of a certain size... You know, the responsibility is removed from you as an individual, so it's much more justifiable if you go and loot somebody's store. Or at least you can't be blamed for it personally because there's all these people around you that are full of energy and... And well, uh, it's, bra- it's very you, easy to turn into, you know, something like a riot. You can certainly be blamed for it personally if uh, video footage catches you looting a store in that case. But uh, people do get caught up in the moment. That's no excuse for, obviously, for what's been going on. So you're welcome to share your thoughts on Ferguson, Missouri, and, of course, the police state 
that has assembled there, which is a whole other aspect of this. There was the initial story of this guy being shot in the back. And of course, people are going to disagree on whether or not somebody who committed a robbery who's running away, uh, you know, it's justified to shoot somebody like that in the back. I say it's not. And I still Uh, think that the robbery is, you know, later detail that was added to try to give mm -hmm. some sort of justification to what the police did, because Again, I've been following this since Saturday and never heard anything about a robbery until earlier today. Yeah, well, I don't, right, I don't know anything about the robbery as far as when it is alleged to have occurred. Was it that same night? Was it uh, from days earlier? There's a lot of information to absorb. You're welcome to add in what you've observed at 855 450 free. And then there's the police state aspect of this, uh, where people are finally seeing, a lot of people, maybe for the first time, they're seeing what all these Bearcats and all this military equipment can amount to and is this something that makes you feel safe and secure the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE join us here on free talk live are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. 
These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. Freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Your thoughts certainly welcome on the developing and very dangerous situation in Ferguson, Missouri, with essentially the total police state coming down or what appears to be a pretty horrible situation. We'll continue to give you more information about that and take your thoughts and calls at 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. You ready to hook up with a Bitcoin wallet? Get your a uh, little bit of your Federal Reserve notes, turn them into something different, something unique, probably the most exciting currency known to man at the moment. Bitcoin is a decentralized currency, not issued by any bank or any government. It's something that is sort of taking the world by storm. Uh, Dell Computer now accepting Bitcoin, Wikipedia, even local businesses that you can physically walk into and pay for things with your cell phone. With Bitcoin. Bitcoin's an amazing technology. You can learn more about it at weusecoins.com and then uh, you can go and get your Bitcoin wallet for free. All you have to do is go to blockchain.com and you can go there on your mobile device, either iPhone or Android based, or you can use your laptop or your desktop. There's a web wallet available for those of you without smartphones. So go and get started with Bitcoin at blockchain.com. Uh, video of Ferguson police gassing a news crew and dismantling their equipment. I don't know if you guys have seen this one yet. It was posted yesterday. At I have not. Boing, no, I haven't boing. either. Yeah, so boingboing.net. There's, of course, news, a lot of news there in Ferguson, and the media is not something the police tend to like having around when right. they're engaging in their police state tactics. Uh, of harming people, shooting protesters, and doing all manner of who knows what. And, and of course, a lot of cases, some of the mo more violent protesters turn out to be police officers who are yes. undercover in the crowd. Those are called agents, provocateur, and their game is to basically whip people up and try to get people to become violent. So is this proven that there's actually agents, provocateur in the crowds, or uh, is this just speculation? I haven't seen that yet on this particular episode of police police violence, but there have been plenty of episodes in the past at various locations where there absolutely have been, you know, real hard evidence that certain people, certain protesters with quotes around them were actually police officers undercover. There was one, I forget which, it was like the National Republican National Convention or something like that, where basically there were protesters who were still wearing the, the jack boots that the police were uh, would have been wearing hmm. that were the ones that were causing like they were wearing the exact same model of boots that some of the other police like so they were undercover wearing the same boots whereas the police were wearing uniforms with those boots so there was some and they were the ones that were causing the trouble they were the ones stirring up the the crowd so there have been instances like that where it's been pretty crystal clear uh, that stuff like that has gone on in this case you've got one news crew filming as another news crew is shot at in the streets of Ferguson uh they are shot with some sort of a tear gas device, and you can hear at one point they're, they've actually bleeped out the cursing. There's not much to really hear. It's just footage from across the road where you've got a news crew of about three people. They've got lights. They've got cameras set up. They were doing a report. The police literally shot a can of tear gas right in the midst of the report. The news crew runs off, and then a few moments later in the video, the Bearcat pulls up next to the news crew's van— <laughs> And uh, and then a crew comes out. One guy's got his gun. He's aiming it around. He's giving cover to the two other uh, police officers as they take down the lights and take the camera that's on the tripod still. Because, again, the news crew ran away. They left a $50,000 camera right there on this tripod. So they then take the camera and point it downward at the ground. 
it's just all as there is this guy standing there, a police officer with a machine gun pointing it around like they're about to get jumped uh, by some crew of uh, of you know by dangerous a news people. crew. Yeah. Right. So how did the guy who's videotaping this incident get away with it then? Like I, I feel like they would have gone after him too. Yeah, f- well, for all I know, they did go after him. I actually haven't taken the time to watch the full five-minute-long uh, video here. I mean, luckily, the video made it online before anything happened. That's why it's, it's just... so important to have multiple people with cameras around in situations like this. So there's only so much covering up that the police can do. And as they continue to cover up, it'll look worse and worse for them. Uh, there's news here also about other news reporters being arrested uh, this one came out of DCist.com, summing up the stories from the Washington Post and Huffington Post. Two reporters were arrested, one from each organization, on Wednesday evening covering the ongoing protests in Ferguson over the death of the 18-year-old Michael Brown, who was killed by a local police officer over the weekend. Frustrations in the Ferguson community boiled over as the police refused to provide the public with any details about Brown's death. Their poor handling of the situation has led to a string of heavy protests, which quickly turned violent as police responded with tear gas and other riot gear. Wesley Lowry, reporter with the Huffington, or excuse me, with the, well, it's actually not made clear, the Post. (laughs) We're Uh, talking about. Lowry's from the Washington Post, and Ryan Riley is from from the Huffington Post. Post. He recounts the ordeal, writing that that he and the Huffington Repo- Huffington Post reporter were camped out in a McDonald's a few blocks from Brown's shooting, which had become kind of a makeshift staging area for reporters to gather and work. Lowry writes that while he and Riley were working at the McDonald's, many armed officers came into the establishment and confronted the pair, asking for their identification. Lowry, who was wearing his press lanyard, said he overheard Riley ask why they had to show ID, to which they didn't press the point, but one added that if they called 911, no one would answer. The police then left, only to come back moments later telling everyone they had to leave. That's when Lowry began recording the incident on his phone. Lowry writes as he was asked to stop recording and was forced to gather his things and leave. As he was leaving, he says he was given conflicting reports as to which way he should exit, which led to the circumstances of his arrest. Go another way, he said. As I turned, my backpack, which was slung over one shoulder, began to slip. I said, officers, let me just gather my bag. As I did, one of them said, okay, let's take him. Multiple officers grabbed me. I tried to turn my back to them to assist them in arresting me. I dropped the things from my hands. He said, my hands are behind my back. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. At which point, one officer said, quit resisting. Yes, you're resisting. Stop resisting. That was when I was most afraid, he said, more afraid than of the tear gas and the rubber bullets. And this is a typical tactic by police. And I believe it was the other reporter was actually able to send text messages or rather twitter messages during the arrest oh really because i i've seen the picture there was a picture that was tweeted out and then a couple of uh messages were tweeted just got arrested so did this other guy This is a typical tactic by police to claim that an individual who is being arrested is resisting the arrest. Uh, It's very difficult to prove that you weren't resisting arrest, especially if there's no video footage around. And I'm, you know, they did say he was forced to stop recording. So I don't know if footage exists of the arrest. I haven't, you know, again, dug in. There's just so much information here. Well, how can they even justify it if they're just telling them to leave a public area without any specific reason? They'll just, they'll, well, that's a great point. Uh, clearly, the reason was to bust up the area where the reporters were hanging out. I mean, that seems what they were doing. They were flushing. recharging their cell phones and laptops. Right, and probably getting online. I mean, McDonald's yes. usually has a free Wi-Fi for folks. There's more coming up here. 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. So, they figured they'd go in there and bust up the reporter convention and, you know, throw them out on the streets and keep them moving around. More on the way here. You can take control, share your thoughts on Ferguson or whatever's on your mind, the police state, etc. This is Free Talk Live. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a block at Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. My Magic Mud is a tooth whitening powder that removes plaque and detoxifies your mouth. 
It's safe for your enamel, giving you a beautiful polish and a dentist-like clean after every use. My Magic Mud is also the perfect remedy for pain caused by sensitivity. It strengthens your teeth and gums for a strong, healthy smile. The ingredients are 100% natural and it's safe for children. Simply brush with My Magic Mud right before bedtime for a cleaning you can count on. Visit MyMagicMud.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Well, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at juicyjuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit Broadcast.LRN.FM to learn how. Broadcast.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can share with us your thoughts on Ferguson, Missouri, the police state there. There's a little bit of audio as one reporter from the Huffington Post as well as another from the Washington Post were being kicked out of a McDonald's, apparently along with everybody else in there. Got a man in fatigues. Let's go, let's go. And I'm time to ask questions. Let's go. Close. Can I move Helmet. You can move your car if your car's out here. Let's go. It is. That's what I was asking. You didn't have time to answer that? Let's go. Let's go. Was this man being shoved out of the McDonald's uh, and then ultimately arrested because he didn't go in the direction they wanted him to go or something like that? He didn't go as fast as they wanted him to go. As you can see, he's trying to gather his things in the video while this man in fatigues is getting up in his face telling him, let's go, let's go. Were they trying to clear the McDonald's because there had been a bomb threat? Uh, was there an Im imminent danger to the uh, the folks that were in there enjoying their themselves a meal or a little bit of free Wi-Fi access? There were a lot of apparently reporters in there. Nope, there nope, wasn't anything like that. There's no reason given, was there? Um, you know what? We don't see the full scene. It was after the police had already come in, like some sort of a team of cops 
uh, in fatigues came into this restaurant and immediately started to demand that people leave. So I'm not sure if a reason was given at, at some point before the camera was turned on. Let's go. There's a door over here. Let's go. So shortly after this, now, you know, they're not shouting at the top of their lungs, but uh, certainly a sense of urgency. This guy's getting right up real close to him. And then he was arrested uh, as well as the other guy. So two reporters arrested at the same incident. Several armed officers in the establishment. We'll continue with more information about this. Also want to let you know about Pro XPN. You can protect your privacy if you're working from a McDonald's, for instance, and you would like to make sure that the people who are there aren't, let's say, sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets and trying to, let's say, the you know somebody sit in, sitting in the parking lot attempting to inter intercept your credit card information. If you've encrypted your data before it leaves your laptop's Wi-Fi transmitter, then that will stop those people from getting that information and it'll also stop your internet service provider from knowing where you're going and what you're doing online you can grab their app for free over at windows or over at uh, proxpn.com slash ftl you can get it for windows macintosh ios devices as well as android linux users setups a little different for you but you can actually get it to work with linux fairly simply you can also get a sweet discount on the annual account from proxpn just by using our discount code, FTL50. Gets you 50% off on that annual account, bringing the price down to $5 a month. Now, that gets you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to. You can even privately torrent with ProXPN, plus get past regionally blocked websites. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. In fact, if you want to save even more, you can pay for that annual account with Bitcoin, and you'll save 62%. You do need this code for that. It's FTLBTC. So two codes. One is FTL50 for those of you not paying in Bitcoin, and then FTLBTC if you're going to pay in Bitcoin. Get you 62% off the price of the annual account. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started. So more of the, uh, the, the reporters here, DCS.com sort of summing up two stories from the Washington Post and the Huffington Post with both of these reporters being arrested, likely for the first time. Uh, it can be a, a real shocker when you're arrested the first time, and especially when you're a member of the press doing your job. It's your job to report on something that's going on, and, and because you're doing your job, in this case, you're targeted by the police, and it can be a really scary situation. Right, especially when you're a press member and you're used to being allowed to film things like this. Exactly. Like if there's ever an event that's going on, the first, like one of the first people you see there, but besides the police, is the press, and they're like standing on the sideline videotaping whatever's going on. But it seems like the police just really didn't want that to get out. Like of why else not. would they chase them away? So um, a little bit more here from the story. Both Lowry and Riley, the press, were arrested and led into a police van where Lowry describes a large man in there screaming and that he couldn't breathe and he was going to die. The police didn't do anything about it. While Lowry and Riley were briefly detained, Lowry writes they were only told they were being detained for trespassing in a McDonald's and was denied to see an arrest report, wasn't given any badge numbers or names when asked. Riley says they weren't even read their Miranda rights, which, by the way, the legality of Miranda rights, as I understand it, is they only have to read them to you if they're going to question you. Yes. So if they're just if they're just arresting you to put you in a police van to take you to the police station where they then release you with no charges, and I, I, that's what I've heard happened here. I'm not sure if they did or did not charge them. Um, I, I'm not real clear on that. But if they just release you with no charges, then there's no Miranda rights that need to be read. When did that change? I thought that the arrest was... Um completely unjustified if you weren't read your Miranda rights. You are incorrect. That is uh, something that you would uh, you would probably get misinformation on by watching television or watching movies. Frequently in TV and in movies, they will read Miranda rights immediately upon arrest. It's, you know, more dramatic, right? You have the right to remain silent and all this. Well, in reality, there's no obligation for them to read you Miranda rights at all until they want to question you. And it's not legal advice. That's just my understanding of, you know, having... And there, there was actually a... Uh, court case that went to the U.S. Supreme Court over this a couple of years ago, and that's what the Supreme Court basically said was Miranda rights only have to be read if you're going to be questioned after being arrested. More from the story here. Uh, let's see. Wes Washington Post editor Marty Barron issued the following statement in light of the incident. Wesley has briefed us on what occurred, and there was absolutely no justification for his arrest. He was illegally instructed to stop taking video of officers. Yep, that's absolutely true. Then he followed officers' instructions to leave a McDonald's after 
and after contradictory instructions on how to exit, he was slammed against a soda machine and then handcuffed. That behavior was wholly unwarranted and an assault on the freedom of the press to cover the news. The physical risk to Wesley himself is obvious and outrageous. After being placed in a holding cell, he was released with no charges, as I thought, and no explanation. He was denied information about the name and badge, uh, names and badge numbers of those who arrested him. We're relieved that Wesley is going to be okay, and we're appalled by the conduct of police officers involved. Yeah, I'm not that appalled. that is very appalling. No, I, I think it's terrible that, like, you know, even if he was arrested and, um, you know, let go without any charges, he should at least be able to get the information of the officers. Like, I thought that was a right, especially oh, since they're Ellen, civil servants. Look at you using logic. <laughs> like, logic doesn't come into play when you're talking about government officials. If logic came into play, he never would have been arrested in the first place. Well, if there are no charges, then uh, does there have to be a report filed for an arrest? Is there an arrest report on someone who they kidnap, put in handcuffs, and sort of go through the motions of you're being arrested? But ultimately, if you don't get a charge, if they don't hand you that, you know, pink slip or whatever the color is where you happen to live, they don't hand you that complaint, which has some sort of a uh, statute written out on it with your name and information. Where's the arrest report? Do they well, even have to file one? Th there will not be an... I don't think there will be an arrest report, but there has to be some kind of police a, log. Some kind of incident report? Of, you know, like, what did you Does do there? for the last three hours of your shift? I mean, it's... I don't know When I was that. a security guard, I had to put that's down... Private, that's a private company. Right, but, you know... I'm just thinking, private security, I had to document, you know, like, this is everything I did throughout my shift, and if times didn't match up, so what were you doing for, like, mm. an hour and a half? You have an hour and a half unaccounted for in your uh, log here. What what did you do? Your thoughts are certainly welcome. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I have to say, I'm not appalled by this conduct. I am uh, not shocked in, in any way, shape, or form. It's actually one of the reasons why I've been trying to stay away from this Ferguson situation throughout the week. I just... I've seen so much footage of police violence in, you know, my years of hosting this radio show. I've seen so many, you know, uh, tear gas grenades thrown in innocent people's houses, babies set aflame by uh, the police, houses burned down to the ground. I mean, I've just seen so much destruction. It was, uh, I, I've tried to stay away from this, honestly, and it's become such a large news story. You know, it can't be ignored at this point. This is, this is the most, probably the most important story uh, certainly of the month. And, right, uh, and it, I, I just feel like it'd be hard for me, like, even if I was as seasoned as you and had to hear all of these terrible police stories, like, I would still be equally as disgusted now just because, like, policemen are no longer, you know, held accountable for things. They're more militarized, and they can basically get away with anything. Yep, sure can. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. You know when they're shooting tear gas grenades at news crews, and putting news cameramen in uh, handcuffs, news reporters in handcuffs, something's screwy. Would love to hear your thoughts. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. You are welcome to call in, even if it's your first time here on Free Talk Live. You take control. Crashed. The death of the dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. 
I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair pain-free and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits? No. No. And no, no. For a limited time, you can try No-No Pro risk-free. You'll also get the facial kit and a travel case. Get weeks of long-lasting results. That's it. I'm getting a no-no. Great minds do think alike. (laughs) (laughs) Try No-No Pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760. 800-952-5760. That's 800-952-5760. 800-952-5760. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats nosnitch.com. That's rats nosnitch.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. we got more coming out of Ferguson, Missouri here in a moment. What about that alleged video or still frames from the video showing the victim of the police violence there, uh, Michael Brown, the young man, 18 years old, 17 some say. Uh, what about the video footage that allegedly shows him robbing a uh, some sort of a convenience store? Daryl has more on that story. Plus, later on tonight, Ellen is going to tell us about uh, artificial intelligence, maybe some developments on that front. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And... Who is it that needs survival training for the outdoors? Well, it's anybody who works, plays, or travels in the great outdoors. Now, why take a survival course? Well, because if anything happens at all when you're outdoors to yourself or a partner, it can be hours or even days before rescuers can reach you, which means it's up to you to handle it. And did you know that the most common outdoor survival situation is the lost or injured day hiker? If you want to do the right thing, the responsible thing, be prepared to handle the onset of any emergency for yourself or loved ones. You should do what the best do. It's what the people, a lot of people from the military, including U.S. Navy Search and Rescue, the Air Force, and more uh, are doing. They're going to uh, CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. They've been featured CBS, Australia, uh, Channel 7, ABC, KCAL News, all over the place, Men's Fitness. 
and uh, even in Brad Pitt's World War Z's DVD extras. So take it from J.J. Carroll Jr., the commanding officer of USMC Mountain Warfare Training Center. He says, quote, the instruction during your course was extraordinary. You exceeded all expectations as a survival instructor. Your steadfast ability to perform your duties as an instructor has truly been an asset to the training center and earned the respect of the Marines. So go and beware, though, of copycat websites. Make sure you get this right. California Survival Training.com. Their number is 805 503 8861. That's California Survival Training.com. It's the school of internationally renowned instructor Thomas Coyne. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts, and we'll get back into more on Ferguson, what's going on out there. David is with us listening in uh, Raleigh to. Talk Radio 850. Hey, David. Hey, how's it going? Thanks Welcome. for taking my call. How are you doing? Yeah, go for it. What's on your mind? Well, the situation with that individual and the and the policeman, you know, I, I don't know what's – I can't say what started it. You know, it's really hard by hearing all these things. But one thing's for sure, if you start looking at how they're being militarized – and I'm in an industry where I sell raw materials to – ELA and government, military. I've been on all kinds of contracts. I sell armor plating that they're retrofitting all these, um, you know, armored APCs, all these mine-resistant vehicles that all these police departments are getting. Uh, one thing's for sure, if you look at everything that's going on with uh, the DHS and their ammo buildup, the, the militarizing of these guys, how they want to put all the restrictions on us and basically try to, you know, ban all these magazines and basically everything they have. They don't want us to have what they have, and they're arming up looking like soldiers. Um, all the executive orders preparing for martial law, you got the NDAA, you got the NDRP. Um, you know, we've got these criminals up there that are getting subpoenaed like Holder. They just don't go. I mean, the president doesn't do anything about it. I mean, if you put all the pieces of the puzzle together, this whole thing, you know, uh, it's, it's getting pretty scary. Now, does it make you feel, I mean, do you feel guilty? Do you have a tough time sleeping at night knowing that you're selling equipment to the very people who may be using it, that, that equipment to oppress you someday? Well, the guy who's doing the work, he's just as nervous. Obviously, he wants the business, and everybody's scratching their heads, kind of like, what's really going on here? So, I, I mean, I know it's not for our protection. It's not like we're going to get invaded. I wish the Chinese would come over here. I mean, we've never been invaded. The Japanese were afraid to come over here. I mean, how, how is anybody going to take on over 120 million heavily armed Americans that are law-abiding, you know, probably 120 million of us passed federal background checks, but yet we're all getting demonized by all these guys, and, you know, it's if you look at everything that's going on, and I do a lot of research and reading, and I don't watch the news, uh, I'd rather listen to you guys on the radio, and, and you just Thanks. take little you know information you get everywhere. You start putting the pieces together. This is really scary stuff, you know? So, yeah, I totally agree with you that it is pretty scary, and the police are definitely being militarized. Uh, you know, they brought a Bearcat, one of these armored personnel carriers that's, you know, armored up. they got a 50 cal mount on the top. They brought one of these things to uh, Keene right here, little Keene, New Hampshire. I mean, there's only 25,000 yeah. people that live here. So cities and small towns around the country have been given this military equipment by the federal government and for years have been buying and arming up. And, uh, you know, they, and they also, you know, they even do psychological things, like they'll change change their uniforms to black from blue yeah uh, exactly. and and they you know have a policy of putting on sun dark sunglasses to where you can't make eye con eye contact like a human being uh with the with the police and and they're also trained to be intimidating they're trained to tell lies so they want to just get convictions they want to make arrests they don't want to help uh people it's i'm not saying that all cops are like that I, there are some police who i think do want to well, help he, people he don't look like they really don't look like police. I mean, my daughter's car alarm was malfunctioning. The police came out. You know, I'm, I'm obviously in North Carolina. I think we're in a pretty good place as far as, you know, gun rights. You know, you can carry guns in bars now if you're not drinking. I mean, we're pretty – we're doing better than a lot of places. And uh, the police showed up for a malfunctioning car alarm. My daughter answers the door. First thing these guys say – and they're not all tacked out. They look like normal sheriffs or whatever. We're going to kill your dog if it comes out here. They're just Seriously? really aggressive. They, yeah. They really and just said that? And, yeah. And she called me up saying, hey, they said they, they were going to shoot the dog. It's the first thing out of their mouth. And 
you know, because she's a registered American Pit Bull Terrier. She's a sweet little dog. Never harmed a, any, anybody, anything, dogs or nothing. Their dog never put a tooth in anything. They just, this is the way they are. They want to shoot dogs. They want to, all the brutality. They just cage you, you know. Um, David, I want to thank you, man. The death buildup is, is really scary. The two billion rounds of ammo, you know, with the Chicago guy. Right, and it's not going to stop. I mean, they're just going to keep getting more and more and more, and they're going to get more and disconnected from their humanity and their their ability to connect with the people around them. They're going to continue to have this mindset inculcated within them that it's us versus them. This is one right. of the mindsets that the police are very commonly have is that, that you know the rest of us are their subjects and they are our masters. And one thing that a lot of police departments have been doing over the last 15 or 20 years is recruiting people that are just out of the military. Oh, yes. you just yep. got back from Afghanistan. Great. Come join the police department. Now you're good at following well, orders. I, I shoot a lot. Of, we have guns. My son and I shoot recreationally. I mean, everything that we have is strictly, you know, it's not even for defensive. We just like to shoot guns. We hunt. We, it's recreational. And you have... Uh, a situation brewing here where uh, you're getting these guys right out of the military, and I know a guy that we shoot with, and he did a bunch of tours over there, and he, he flat out told me, you know, a post-traumatic stress syndrome for him is he just has a hard time fitting in. Like, he's just so used to kicking down doors every day of his life and running in and hmm. blowing people away that are, you know, obviously pointing guns at him when they walk in these situations when they're clearing, you know, insurgent areas or whatever but he flat out told me man I, I hear a car backfire or something i'm ready to go off so these guys are already on edge it's the only thing they know you know whether they're on i'm not saying military guys are like this and not like or like this in general yeah i don't want to make i don't want to make it clear i don't want to generalize that all police are a bunch of thugs i don't think that's true i think there are some out either. there that are trying to do as best they can in a broken hobbled system and i thank you david for your call and thoughts tonight appreciate it the toll free number is 855 450 free however I think there is a consistent theme of militarization of the police. There's no doubt about it from the equipment that they've been purchasing and that they've been granted by the federal government, literal military leftovers. Uh, the Bearcat, as I understand it, was a failed piece of military equipment Yes, because it didn't have enough protection, shielding from, uh, from IEDs, as I understand it. So bombs coming from underneath the vehicle apparently was a problem with the, with the Bearcat. So let's give them to the police departments. Right, and something I'm really curious about is that if if you're somebody that's for freedom and liberty and you want to protect your family and your friends and everybody that you know from, you know, basically an invasion of your livelihood from, you know, these aggressive officers or uh, military members who are benefiting from this kind of machinery or armor plating or whatever it is that you're producing— I you know I would think that you would want to like change professions at some point and um I feel like if a lot of people just decided to not show up to work at one point then you know they'd kind of be out of luck and they'd be scrambling to find more people to produce these things for them those jobs though they generally tend to pay well yeah which means that you're not going to have a hard time finding people to fill those jobs it's a good point yeah I I've had jobs before where they're like yeah, go ahead. Quit. Right. There's 15 people that want your job. And well, also, what what percentage of their business goes to government as well? Is it the supermajority? Is it a half their a business is going to government? And what percentage makes it objectionable? Is it 10%? Do you have to quit if 10% of their contracts are government contracts? I mean, you used to make guns, Daryl. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. 
Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the Realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, August 15th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,304, silver opened at $19.60, and Bitcoin is trading around $509.33. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. In the news, on Thursday, Missouri Governor Jane Nixon announced the Missouri State Highway Patrol will handle policing of Ferguson, Missouri. The site of large protests and police violence since a police officer shot 18-year-old Mike Brown to death on Saturday. News Channel 5 also reported the FBI would be taking over the investigation into the shooting. The FBI will handle all operations, protests, and other activities. Local police will operate under the direction of the FBI. Governor Nixon said the police should release the name of the officer accused of shooting Brown. Nixon also stated that Ferguson resembled a war zone. On Thursday, press freedom organizations held a press conference in support of New York Times reporter James Risen. The U.S. Department of Justice is attempting to compel Risen to testify against former CIA employee Jeffrey Sterling, who they accuse of leaking classified information to Risen. Risen is the author of the 2006 book State of War, which describes the CIA's efforts to interrupt the Iranian nuclear program. The groups presented a petition of more than 100,000 signatures asking the Justice Department to quit their pursuit of Risen. If Risen does not testify against Sterling, he will face jail time and fines. The conference was organized by the Committee to Protect Journalists, the Freedom of the Press Foundation, the Government Accountability Project, the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, and Reporters Without Borders. An eBay subsidiary, Braintree Payments, is exploring Bitcoin acceptance. The Wall Street Journal reports, Braintree Payments is part of PayPal, which is owned by eBay. PayPal executives have reportedly been meeting with Coinbase, a Bitcoin merchant processor, about accepting Bitcoin on the Braintree network. At this time, no agreements have been made. eBay CEO John Donahoe has hinted at the potential for Bitcoin integration in the past. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online bravenewbookstore.com. And support comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons, 4 p.m. on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 15th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A former Egyptian interior minister has claimed the United States was warned by Egypt of attacks several times before September 11, 2001, and that the U.S. was responsible for the 2011 Egyptian revolution. 
Habib al Adlai served under former Egyptian President Mubarak. Speaking at his retrial in Cairo, Egypt, El Adlai stated that Egypt received information in May 2001 regarding an impending attack. He said the CIA and FBI were both contacted. These statements corroborate a report by the Associated Press from December 7th of 2001, where Mubarak claims to have warned the U.S. of an attack. Aram Online reports that El Adlai also stated the U.S. had a two-part plan to covertly overthrow the Egyptian government. He claims the Egyptian government was told to accept a democratic model and financial incentives or be accused of being dictators. El Adlai said the U.S. worked to mobilize the youth to revolt and create revolution. The peace and freedom movement is alive and well. No matter what corner of the country you reside in, there are events happening all month long. Today through the 17th, the first annual Pacific Northwest Freedom Festival is being held in Chehalis, Washington. Also today through the 17th, the second annual Vermont Freedom and Unity Festival. Adam Kokesh is headlining at the Magic Mountain Ski Area in Londonbury, Vermont. Now tomorrow there is the March on CNN, Stop the Genocide in Gaza. Protesters will meet on Hollywood and Vine in Los Angeles at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And August 22nd through the 25th, the second annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Festival in Circle Pine Center in Delta, Michigan will happen. Check out the LibertyBeat.com for links to all of these events. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard, and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 15th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Mere days before his upcoming relocation to Denver, Colorado, four-year Chicago resident Paul Marston admitted today that he wished he had taken a little more time to truly loathe the city he has lived in for nearly half a decade. You know, I've been here for a couple years, but now that I'm finally leaving, I realize I never really got to hate this place. Marsden confirmed that in the time he's lived in the city, he never quite managed to explore his own shitty neighborhood, adding that he regrets never getting to know the stuck-up workers at the cafe down the block, never visiting the overpriced bodega on his corner, and never becoming violently ill from the food at the crappy Mexican place across the street from him. You know, I lived right next to that bar for four years, and I just wish I took more time to abhor the disgusting smell that hits you every time you walk by. I'd always heard this place blows. Guess it's a shame I never got to hate it like I should. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, you are invited to take control of the airwaves here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. You get to control the content. So whatever it is that you see that you like, you can vote it up. If you don't like it, you can vote it down, and you can also submit your own items there, whether it's a YouTube video or news item or blog post. Uh, so go in and see for yourself. The top story right now, actually, at freetalklive.com. Police in Ferguson, Missouri, once charged a man with destruction of property for bleeding on their uniforms while four of them allegedly <laughs> beat him. <laughs> no. So that's as voted by no. you. Again, that was uh, once, so probably not recently, but at some point in the past. Uh, go and get the details over at freetalklive.com. And uh, let's go right into your calls and thoughts. Ian, Ellen, and uh, Daryl in here tonight. We're going to Menard, who is listening to Talk Radio 850 in Raleigh. Hello, Menard. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. You're on the uh, air. Yeah. Um, one of the things, you know, you're talking about the uh, militarization of the police. Uh, you know, when they build, uh, been in the, there's a 10-year plan, basically, that's, uh, typically done, I, I saw it in telecom and you see it in the military, it's all the APCs, which are Army personnel carriers, and you get the MARs and the weaponry, which are the machine guns and whatnot. They're basically produced en masse. You have contracts and whatnot. And so basically, one-third of what is produced probably makes it to battle, which is Iraq or Afghanistan. The two-thirds are sitting here in Army bases. So once that conflict is over, basically, they're sitting there as we call it, mothballed. Mm -hmm. So over time, they've been paid for and everything else. So then they bring them out. Now, here's the other thing that's very, uh, that could possibly be an issue. 
is over time, you basically process these through all the police and um, civic organizations. Well, not civic, but the, the police organizations throughout the country. And over time, you have a potential where you can basically create martial law. And we're seeing a hint of that today, especially in Ferguson, bringing yes. all that high-powered armor out, plus all the, uh, you know, the weaponry. So basically, and I'm not saying that's happening, I'm just saying that's a potential because, you know, America, if you look back in World War II, everything that we had sent overseas, and I had actually been in some of the battlefields back in the Pacific, and a lot of stuff, it was not even, you know, they had landing craft and whatnot that were just sitting there rusting on these uh, South Sea islands. Mm. And, you know, they brought the big ships back, but a lot of stuff they just dumped. I can tell you, I was in Guadalcanal, and they dumped B-17s, they dumped tanks, everything, right there in the lagoon. And so that was back in 1945, but today, uh, with the uh, price tag being, you know, a lot more heavier than what is today, uh, that material is sitting here. And so basically if you look at a potential or a, let's say a uh, philosophy of the upper governmental uh, regime or the whatnot, All they have to do is flip the switch, and they can turn that stuff on for their for their purposes, oh, yeah, whatever well, they might be. Yeah, well, the thing is here. It's here. I mean, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, and here's the other, here's the other little clue that's coming on is when you get Homeland Security securing so many rounds of ammunition, uh, you know, which we've never heard of before, uh, obviously something is gearing up in the works. Menard, I appreciate your call and the thoughts tonight. Thanks for making it here on Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Comment on Ferguson, the police state, militarization of the police. These have all been on the table for tonight. We've got more coming up from Ferguson where the allegation about the young man who was shot by a police officer that kind of kicked off all of the uh, the violence and the things that have happened since then, uh, the protests, etc., that this young man was alleged to have been involved in a robbery. Daryl, you've got more on that story. Your yes. calls and thoughts are welcome, though. And don't forget, we're on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm if you want to get on here with us. So let's jump into that story, Daryl. What You did a little digging because I had said earlier that, you know, in this this rush of information that just continues to come in, whether it's uh, reporters being arrested, reporters being shot with tear gas, uh, individuals being, uh, you know, violently abused by the police, there's so much to absorb. The word came out at some point uh, today or today. yesterday. Came out today. That, uh, that the young man who was shot and killed by police, shot in the back, uh, mind you. Yes, from 35, from 35 feet, feet away, away. As he was running away. Uh, that this guy was involved in a robbery. And you said, Daryl, that you hadn't heard that in the police report initially on the shooting of the, the man in the back. Correct. And that it just seemed to all of a sudden come out out of, uh, out of nowhere. Yes. So I have pieced together from two separate news reports, one from Fox News, one from the L.A. Times. Okay. Where... You know, they have each done, because, you know, there's a lot of stuff to report on. They each have part of the story here, and I've sort of pieced it together. Got it. Uh, so this is taken from two different news outlets. Police Chief Thomas Jackson held an afternoon press conference today to say that Michael Brown and his friend Dorian Johnson were stopped last Saturday Quote, because they were work walking down the middle of the street blocking traffic, end quote. Hmm. The robbery was not related to the initial contact between the officer and Brown. So that's the police officer? There, the the police, police chief. The police chief admitting that uh, Michael Brown was not stopped because he was a suspect in a robbery. Yes. So they have broken down what happened Immediately prior to the interaction that led to Michael Brown being murdered. Okay. Police reports released on Friday under an open records request showed that at 11.51 a.m. on the day of the shooting, authorities received a 911 call reporting a robbery at the Ferguson Market. An unidentified officer who was later identified as Darren Wilson 
or no, I uh, apologies. Uh, the unidentified officer was not Darren Wilson in this circumstance. Okay. Unidentified officer was dispatched to the store and arrived within three minutes. That officer interviewed an employee and customer who gave descriptions of a man who stole the cigars, a box of cigars valued at $49.98, mm-hmm. well under felony level uh, yep. you know, grand larceny, a box of cigars, and walked off with another man towards a quick trip store. Descriptions of the suspect were broadcast over the police radio. The police officer did not find the suspect's either on the street or at the quick trip, according to the report. Separately, Officer Darren Wilson had been responding to a nearby call involving a sick two-month-old child from 11.48 a.m. until noon. So Darren Wilson was busy with another call call during the time that the description of the burglary suspect was called out over the radio. Mm Mm-hmm. So chances are he didn't hear the didn't description. Hear uh, one minute later, he encountered Michael Brown and his friend walking down Canfield Drive. The documents released did not give a description of what happened between Brown and Wilson. Dorian Johnson, the friend, was not charged with the crime. So if the allegation is that Michael Brown and a friend mm-hmm. robbed a store and took a box of cigars, then would one would think that the friend would be charged with something. So hold on. But he was not. Being you mentioned, an accessory, maybe. You mentioned one minute later. Was the shooting of Michael Brown that close to the robbery of the, the store? Did I miss uh, it? Darren Wilson got off of the call from the sick child at noon. Okay. He encountered Michael Brown at 12.01. Got it. So one minute after he finished the call that he was on. So there's almost no chance that he had gotten a description of the alleged robber, and no one said that Michael Brown was found with a box of cigars uh, when he was shot. When still photographs of the robbery were shown on televisions, watchers started comparing details of the suspect's clothing to what Brown was wearing and saying it could not have been the same person. We will come back with more here in moments. You can take control. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, August 15th, 2014, gold opened at 1296. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1343.12, 671.56 for a half ounce, or 335.78 for a quarter ounce. That's 1361.35, 671.56, and 335.78. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. 
with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa. Hey, 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 who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is, you ain't gonna make it. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control right here, toll-free, at 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro-XPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. Whether you want to talk about Ferguson or maybe the militarization of the police in your town, uh, you can share your story with us here. And maybe you are with the police and the uh, the militarization of the police is disturbing to you, or maybe you love it. Maybe you get your adrenaline all pumped up and you love the idea of going out there and crushing some heads. We know there's cops like that out there, and unfortunately, there are too many of them these days. Again, our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Hey, ExpressCoin.com. That's the best place to go to get Bitcoins, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and even Darkcoin. And they've got great prices. In fact, the amount you're going to pay to transfer your money, your cash, into uh, various different coins is very low at ExpressCoin. In fact, you can get it for free. If you order with code FTL, use coupon code FTL, and you'll get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin for no transfer fee or $40 worth of any of those other kind of coin. Uh, go to ExpressCoin.com. You can use wire transfer, check, money order, or even cash deposit at uh, there are certain banks that have shared branching. Uh, the, the community banks, what do they call them? Uh, uh, shared, shared shared branch. Yeah, shared branch. Service branching. center. Service, service centers. Credit unions. That's what I'm looking Credit for. Union Credit service unions. Center. Yeah, so service center. Yes. CUServiceCenter.com is the website uh, that has the list of all of the... Has them all, all the shared yes. branching people? Okay, cool. So, yeah, that's one way that you can do it. There's several different methods, and it's fast, and it's affordable. If you go over that $40, it's only 3%. Last time I looked, it was a great price, and I don't think you can beat it anywhere. ExpressCoin.com. Go and get your cryptocurrencies at expresscoin.com and they do have a smartphone app as well so so much information hard to know what's true daryl you were saying that based on your uh, research it appears that the people who allegedly robbed the convenience store of a box of cigars you said may not have been uh the man michael brown but yet the officer who was alleged to have shot michael brown to death in ferguson missouri he claims uh ellen you said you saw a report saying that he did hear the report about the the robbery uh, yes, I was actually just looking at a photo that was posted on Twitter that somebody just posted in the uh, the LRN chat room, and um, it's a photo of the police report, and in the report, the policeman says that, I responded to that location and was given a description by dispatch of a black male in a white t-shirt that was walking northbound on West Florissant. So apparently, uh, he responded to the location and then was given a description. 
He claims in a report on uh, stltoday.com, the officer claims that he thought or that he saw in Brown's hand cigars and that he realized that he might be the robbers. That's the claim is that he actually did have cigars on his person in that case. But regardless of all these details, I don't think it really ultimately matters if he was the guy who robbed. He was still unarmed. Right. He was unarmed and... As you pointed out, this wasn't grand theft. This was a $50 box of cigars. So the idea that even if this was the guy who robbed the liquor store, that someone should be shot to death or shot at all over a box of cigars, I'm sorry, I just don't agree with it. No. I think that's going too far. And who is this police officer to make the instant judgment that, yes, this man is guilty? Like, he hasn't sure. even had a trial yet. There's he no way that you know that he's guilty. a police guilty. officer. That's who he is so to make the, the judge, determination. The judge and the jury all at once. Which they're not supposed to be. They're but. not supposed to be, but in so many situations, you see that they wind up doing things like this. You can share your thoughts with us here, 855-450 free. There's uh, there's more. Uh, there's so much to cover from Ferguson. In fact, I know that uh, you had something, uh, Ellen, about the Ferguson police. Apparently, they're no longer in charge. Uh, yeah, so I found this story on news.msn.com, and uh, the headline says, In Ferguson, Missouri, the Missouri Highway Patrol seized control of a St. Louis suburb Thursday, Stripping local police of their law enforcement authority after four days of clashes between officers in riot gear and furious crowds protesting the death of an unarmed black teen shot by an officer. The intervention, ordered by Missouri Governor Jay Nixon, came as President Barack Obama spoke publicly for the first time about Saturday's fatal shooting of Michael Brown and the subsequent violence that shocked the nation and threatened to tear apart Ferguson, a town that is nearly 70 percent black patrolled by a nearly all-white police force. What a surprise. Obama said there is no excuse for violence either against the police or by officers against peaceful protesters. I, I mean, that's that's kind of funny to me that he would say there's no excuse for violence against police when they're the ones that are mm-hmm. igniting the, the violence. Nixon's promise to ease the deep racial tensions was swiftly put to the test as demonstrators gathered again Thursday evening in the neighborhood where looters smashed and burned businesses on Sunday and police mm. repeatedly fired tear gas and smoke bombs. But the latest protests were a world apart from the earlier demonstrations, with a light, even festive atmosphere and no hint of violence. The streets were filled with music, free food, and even laughter. Protester Cleo Willis said the change was palpable. You can feel it. You can see it, he said. Now it's up to us to ride that feeling. After a particularly violent Wednesday night, Nixon said local police would no longer be in charge of the area, although they would still be present. He said Highway Patrol Captain Ron Johnson, who is black, would be in command. Now, I don't see how the, the black thing has uh, any significance here. Actually, really, I can explain to you how it has significance, and it's very significant. Ferguson, Missouri is a town with a population roughly 65% black. Right. right there are 70% there. Yeah, in the article earlier, it said the population was mostly black, but the police uh, force was mostly white. There are 53 police officers on the Ferguson police squad. Mm -hmm. 50 of them are white. Mm -hmm. I just wish that race wasn't such a significant factor in all of this. You know, I I feel like that shouldn't play such a huge role. It shouldn't, but in a lot of places it does wasn't there an uh, okay another allegation here i have not seen this but i believe mark said last night that somebody from anonymous has released some pictures pulled from this police officers i don't know if it was his facebook or wherever uh that were allegedly taken in his basement where he had a stars and bars flag hung up I have not seen that, now, so that I don't know. that doesn't mean you're a racist if you're flying the stars and bars. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but I don't know. Was Darren Wilson a white guy? I'm not even sure. Yes. I presume he is. Um, so if he's a, you know, it, if you've got a white guy shooting a black guy in the streets and he happens to have a uh, stars and bars flag in his basement, you know, maybe there's something to that. Maybe this guy was someone who didn't like black people. Yeah, maybe. You never know.
The change was meant to ensure that we allow peaceful and appropriate protests, that we use force only when necessary, that we step back a little bit and let some of the energy be felt in this region appropriately, Nixon said. Ferguson will not be defined as a community that was torn apart by violence, but will be known as a community that pulled together to overcome it, the governor said at a news conference in the nearby community of Normandy. So what they're claiming in that story is that it sounds like the most recent protests was more of a fun-style occasion. Are things lightening up in the streets there? I want to know what it's really like. I want to know, you know, what is a day in the life of somebody who's trying to go to work in Ferguson? Do you have to go through checkpoints? I mean, what is it like in the streets there? Just not around the protests necessarily, but just in general. Uh, if you want to share your thoughts, any observations you have, maybe you're there in Ferguson, we'd love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And of course, you can also bring up anything you want. Artificial intelligence, we can talk about that coming up on Free Talk Live. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Email is easy, instant, and free, and that can be real embarrassing. Email lacks the eye contact and body language you get in face-to-face -face conversation, or the tone of voice and other nuance you hear in a telephone conversation. Email is just words, often few words. We're all smothering in spam, so we often reply in terse fashion that's easy to misunderstand. And email doesn't cost you a postage stamp, and it lacks the deliberation time it'd take to walk to the snail mailbox so it's easy to succumb to the oh yeah stimulus response trap when in doubt don't snap back at snippy messages you get you may have mistaken the sender's intent and unless you're sending aol to aol there's no unsend for more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Hey, Jeff, what's up? South Florida, man, that's, that's one of the best places to go out and have fun. There's nothing like going out shooting a game of pool, drinking a few beers, and seeing some dancing girls. I mean... Nothing <laughs> quite like it, huh, Jeff? <laughs> nothing quite like it. To Can't me. do that anywhere else in the country. <laughs> I mean, Only South in Florida. Florida. Tampa and Miami. Something. Well, in most other places in the country, you can't do it all in the same building. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. South Florida, man, it's in, you know, especially down in Miami, I mean, that's, that's party station down there, guys. A lot of people don't even go out till around 11 o'clock or midnight. Lulu's far and Grill. They had it. They were selling these T-shirts. It said, "I lost my pants at Lulu's bar last night." Lulu's. Yeah, Lulu's. Like fruity. 
No, no, no. It's, it's a nice place down in downtown Fort Lauderdale. But anyway. Uh, it must be a nice be place with shirts that say, I lost my pants. <laughs> 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 Come anyway, on uh, in. Leave your pants behind. <laughs> <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the website. You get to create the content there. Those other talk show hosts want to charge you for accessing their sites, and ours is free. So go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. I want to tell you about asiarunlikehellguide.com. It's an agency for one of Asia's largest and most modern hospitals with 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year from 40 countries. They can do all kinds of different things, and they can do them for cheap. Example, major medical, the single largest reason for U.S. bankruptcies, heart bypass, heart valve replacement, many other big surgeries cost 120000 to 150000 in the United States and can equal the price of United States houses. Compare that to, say, twenty-five to $30,000 in Thailand with no insurance and you're low on cash. It's the difference between mortgaging your house and your family's financial future versus a cheaper new car. Run. Run like hell. Asia run like hell guide.com. That's Asia run like hell guide.com to learn more about what's available. So, uh, back to the news about Ferguson, Missouri. There seem to be differing stories about whether or not the officer who shot Michael Brown knew that Michael Brown was a possible suspect in the robbery. According to the police chief, apparently he didn't know, but according to another report I saw, he did know. So who knows what the details are there, but we did just hear, I guess, Ellen, you saw something during the break. Apparently when he was shot in the back, he at some point had his hands in the air. Yeah. Witnesses say that uh, he had his hands in the air and the officer was saying, hands in the air, don't shoot. Like and, he had a, a weapon of some uh, kind. I had heard uh, reports earlier that he was also saying, I'm not armed. As he was running away? Yeah, because, you know, the cop's like, don't shoot. I'm not armed. I'm not armed. Yep. And, and then, then still got shot three times. There's another uh, paragraph here that I'm reading that's really confusing because it's telling a completely different story than what I've been hearing. Police have said Brown was shot after an officer encountered him and another man on the street. They say one of the men pushed the officer into his squad car, then physically assaulted him in the vehicle and struggled with the officer over the officer's weapon. At least one shot was fired inside the car. The struggle then spilled onto the street where Brown was shot multiple times. From 35 feet away. The officer involved was injured with one side of his face swollen. Hmm. Yeah, the officer's claim is that Brown and him had some kind of altercation in the vehicle, but the officer admits to shooting him from 35 feet away. Hmm. As he was flee- the Brown was fleeing. I, I don't know. Dorian Johnson, who says he was with Brown when the shooting happened, has told a much different story. He told reporters that the officer ordered them out of the street then grabbed his friend's neck and tried to pull him into the car before brandishing his weapon and firing. He says Brown started to run and the officer pursued him, firing multiple times. This sounds like a horrifying situation. I don't know if any video was taken. Hopefully somebody around uh, was able I to shoot I think some. there was some dash cam video, mm. but it's not being released yet mm-hmm. because one of the articles that I was reading earlier mentioned you know, there have been multiple... Uh, Freedom of Information Act request for the Dash video. So don't know if there was any, but if there is, it hasn't been released. Well, they're certainly not going to release that if they won't even release the name of the officer who is involved. And you know how you they mentioned They finally that, have done that officially. 
they right. have officially yeah. now? They, they officially did that this afternoon during the, the same press time. conference at the same time that they said, oh, and by the way, this guy stole a box of cigars. And they're calling it a strong arm robbery, which is interesting. There's a uh, story about what people are saying in response to this. Some individuals, and I, I don't know, I think I closed that window, but there was a one of the stories about this is getting comments from people from their Twitters about how they feel about this. You know, was this a, what does a strong arm robbery exactly mean? Was it his, uh, his blackness that was the, uh, the, the weapon that he used? Because apparently he was completely unarmed. He used his so, very strong arms. Right, he, did he use his strong arm to reach over and grab the box of cigars and run out of the store? Uh, so anyway, all that aside, there's the larger issue of the militarization of the police. Because we can quibble about the details in the story. Nobody really knows much of anything right, right. now. There's the police side. And then there's the witnesses side. And I'm more likely to believe the witnesses uh, in this one. But there's also opinion here from CNN. This is Tim Lynch, the director of the Cato Institute's Project on Criminal Justice. He writes that the stories coming out of Ferguson paint an increasingly worrying picture that of a middle America city like most, any other being turned into a war zone. It began with the shooting death of Michael Brown by a local police officer, which seemed questionable, but the feeling in the community was the police could not conduct a real impartial investigation. When the police department declined to identify the officer involved, protests began. Now, if a listener didn't know any better, he would think the description of the events unfolding in Ferguson must surely be taking place in Iraq or Afghanistan. Combat armored shock troops shoot tear gas into crowds, while snipers train high-powered rifles on groups of civilians from atop heavily armored MRAP, mine-resistant ambush-protected assault vehicles, rolling through and blocking off city streets like tanks. This is America, but it doesn't look like it anymore. Republican Representative Justin Amash of Missouri tweeted in the morning, quote, Images and reports out of Ferguson are frightening. Is this a war zone or a U.S. city? Government escalates tensions with military equipment and tactics. That's a great point, that the government here certainly is not doing de-escalation style work. It's not bringing communities together. It's not helping heal wounds. It's bringing in the troops and holding, uh, you know, basically taking over a city. Right. And the most ironic part of this, I find, is that in the article I was just reading, it mentions how Obama made the statement, we need to have peace in Ferguson, and yet... He's not doing anything about it except saying that he's on vacation right now. Well, well, what's he going to do about it exactly? I mean, what he is doing is he's sending uh, Bearcats and MRAPs into all these various police departments. Right, and I mean, he's he's the commander in chief. Like, uh, ultimately, he's the one who has control over the military and the police force. So if this is really if, if what, this is really such an issue, he could at least like I don't know maybe I, say I something to the police chief there, like. Maybe you guys should take a step back. I, I don't think the president has any direct authority over any police department. Well, except for maybe federal police. I mean, he's the exec, top executive dog. He would be in, he would be in charge of like the DEA and you know Fed, fed cops, right, right? But they're not considered a police department. They certainly I see what you mean. have policing you mean powers. City. You mean municipal police? Right. Departments. But you know, when people think of police department, yeah. they don't think FBI, CIA. Uh, so let's continue here. Pictures and videos tweeted out of the war zone show what appear to be camouflaged units of soldiers occupying and subduing the outraged civilians of Ferguson. But these are not soldiers. They are police officers. How could a small local police force act like an occupying military force? Under what is called Program 1033, the Department of Defense has been doling out military surplus to police departments for use in causes like the domestic wars against drugs and terrorism. Billions of dollars of military arms and armament have been distributed to local police departments since the program started in the late 1990s. This misguided policy leads to inevitable consequences like what we're witnessing in Ferguson. As early as 1999, the Cato Institute warned in a briefing paper, Warrior Cops, the ominous growth of paramilitarism in America police departments, that Program 1033 is a terrible idea. First, dressing police officers as soldiers is dangerous because the mindset of a soldier is entirely inappropriate for a police officer. Soldiers fight a military enemy. Police officers deal with citizens who are ostensibly protected by the Bill of Rights. 
Second, dressing a cop as a soldier does not make him a soldier. It makes him a more dangerous cop. SWAT teams are not military special forces even if they try to act like them, and police officers simply do not have the training that military troops have, and giving them the arms, the armament, and the attitude of being warriors is simply dangerous. We'll talk more. He's got a few more points to make. And your calls and thoughts are welcome here at 855-450 free. Ferguson, Missouri, things are, they claim, looking better, according to one story Ellen gave us earlier. But what's really going on tonight in Ferguson as the weekend is kicking up? Will there be more violence? You let us know here on Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave. But he told me he'd change, so I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Mm-hmm. 
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want. Just dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. When you see the pictures and the footage of the police doing what they're doing in Ferguson, Missouri, with the MRAPs and the Bearcats and the helmets and the fatigues and the big tough guy attitudes... The reflective sunglasses, etc. The dogs, maybe, I don't know if they've shot any dogs yet in Ferguson, but it's probably only a matter of time. Uh, when you see the video footage of this stuff happening, does it make you feel, like, warm in your heart? Do you feel safer? Do you feel like you're protected? When you look at this video footage, do you think to yourself, yes, this is what I want from my county or city police? I feel like I'm a prisoner in... A place where I'm supposed to feel at home. Well, luckily you're not actually in Ferguson, Missouri. You're here safely in, in Keene, New Hampshire right. at the moment. Right. Luckily for me, I'm not in that situation. But I'm just saying, like, it's still- But this could be where you live. It still is frightening. Like, I feel terrible for the people who live in this area. Like, there's no way that they could have predicted this would happen. And yet, there it is, just showing up in their backyard- It reminds me that the entirety of the globe is one giant Stanford prison experiment. What do you mean by that? And what is the Stanford prison experiment? The Stanford prison experiment was a, uh, I I guess, a psychological experiment that was done in the 70s at Stanford University Mm -hmm. in California to where there were a dozen students— that volunteered well there there were more than that that volunteered but a dozen of the students that volunteered were assigned the roles of prisoners and another dozen students were assigned the roles of prison guards that's right randomly randomly a makeshift prison was set up in one of the hallways of the college the prisoners were all arrested by the local police department, taken in, you know, fingerprinted to make it appear as though it were a legitimate arrest. Mm -hmm. And then they were taken to this secret prison. And the people that were the prison guards were given very few instructions about how to be a prison guard. Mm -hmm. They were told to exert their authority. And the experiment was supposed to have lasted two weeks. It wound it up being shut down after six days because of how bad things were going. And if I recall the story from Phil Zambardo, the uh, the, the guy who was the, the kind of the college professor involved right. in it, it was his wife who had to talk sense into him and he convince him to uh, to shut down the experiment because she was on the outside of this whole thing. He had gotten involved in this as sort of like basically the warden of he the He was the, the jail. warden of the jail as well as the conductor of the experiment, <laughs> yeah. which violates all kinds yeah. of rules of ethics. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I know it was really terrible, even though it was just an experiment. Like there's people that went on hunger strikes. Oh, yeah, there was yeah. Abuse. people being beaten nudity uh you know making them get up at random hours in the night and do right, push-ups humiliation. And, yeah zimbardo actually was called as an expert witness in the hearings that were held after the abu Ghraib situation mm-hmm. and one thing that he testified to was you know hey i ran an abu Ghraib type thing for a week in the 70s doing this experiment and I can tell you right now that you don't have to tell your soldiers to torture people. You tell them as little as possible and torture will happen automatically. Yeah, and he was just doing let's play pretend. These, of course, guys are in a real situation with right. real victims and real prisoners. It's the Stanford Prison Experiment Experiment is fascinating to read. You did a great job summarizing it. But anybody who takes the time, Zimbardo actually has a website that he put up yes. that includes photos and you know r- reports yeah. and, and gives you a good rundown of some of the real grisly details of how bad things went. And then Davi Barker, who you know Davi, he's mm-hmm. one of the uh, advertisers occasionally on this show, he wrote a book, Authoritarian Sociopathy, where he looks at the Stanford Prison Experiment, the Milgram Experiment— and other experiments that show, you know, that 
basically anybody that is given an authoritative role mm -hmm. will wind up turning evil. So the Milgram experiment was the one where they shocked the people in the other room and they yes. like turned up the dial slowly. That's correct. Yes. And uh, Stanley Milgram, the guy that put that experiment together, he hypothesized beforehand that <laughs> only 1% to 3% will wind up giving the full shock. And it wound up being somewhere near two-thirds of the people. Uh, Daryl, why did you bring up Stanford Prison Experiment in the first place? You said this whole thing or the whole world. The, the or... militarization of the police, what's going on in Ferguson, mm -hmm. what's going on in Iraq, in Gaza, everywhere around the world. You have people in authoritative roles that just wind up being more evil than the batch that they replaced. Yeah, and of course, as you you increase the militarization of the police, you shouldn't be surprised when the police officers start to act like a military squad and you know start to treat people like they're in a war zone as opposed to treating people like they have human rights. Right, and, and if there's anything that we can learn from these experiments, it's that human nature, like you're going to feed off of the, the negative uh, effects of the people around you. So if there's somebody who's you know being a, a bit too aggressive and you're working with them, that kind of rubs off on you. It could. And we certainly don't see very many police trying to stop the aggressiveness of the other police. Even if even if the aggressiveness isn't rubbing off on all the other cops, there's certainly the problem where the other cops, who are supposedly the good cops, are not saying anything, they're not doing anything, they're not stepping in to stop. Whoa, hey, right. you can't do that to him! Well, they're you know? conditioned to think that it's normal. Well, we've seen acceptable. a couple of examples over the last couple of years very few examples where a cop steps in you mean to where a police officer steps in yeah. and then it's that officer that gets reprimanded and loses their job sure or like the one who was uh who arrested the speeder there was like a state cop who arrested a speeding cop in South Florida she was targeted by uh several police after that for yes. threats and, uh, and investigations into her personal hey, information hey you just crossed the thin blue line over that's here that's what she did that's what she did uh so back to the story here real quick a little bit more from cnn.com they've got an article from uh Cato Institute one of their guys this is Tim Lynch He's talking about how dressing the police as soldiers is very, very dangerous because of the mindset, the mentality. And, and that's what you're pointing out here, Daryl, with the, the prison experiment. These were college students in the prison experiment. You know, one week yes. they were college students. The next week they were just playing pretend in this uh, fake prison. And all of a sudden they became prison guards in, their, yeah. the, in the way they acted towards these others. And the people that were the prisoners started acting like victims and they started acting into, yeah. into the role of, uh, of prisoners. And anyway, going on here, these are some of the reasons why you shouldn't dress the police as military. Third, he says, it's uh, if cities really need a SWAT unit, they should be reserved for extraordinary situations beyond the capability of the ordinary patrolman, such as a hostage scenario. Such SWAT units should not be deployed for routine policing calls. And that, of course, was the original intention, as I understand it, behind the SWAT program was that they were only supposed to respond to the most extreme dangerous situations but of course like all government programs SWAT has expanded out far beyond the original intentions of the program to include they've even done SWAT raids as I understand it on people who owe money on school loans so and SWAT is an acronym that stands special for weapons. special weapons and tactics yeah the escalation of conflict in Ferguson didn't have to occur. If the Pentagon hands local cops millions of dollars worth of hammers, it should be no surprise when suddenly everything looks like a nail. We can only hope the situation ends without more violence. If President Obama wants to do something about the awful events in Ferguson, he should end Program 1033. Which comes back around to what you were saying earlier, Ellen. That you've got a quote from Obama making it sound like he doesn't think anyone should be violent. The police shouldn't be violent. The protesters shouldn't be violent. Well, that's great, but what do you actually doing about it you point out he's on vacation what has he done in the past well he's presided over the distribution of this military equipment yeah if he really cared about police militarization and the and the police being violence toward uh, being violent toward protesters he could have put a stop to the program 
He could have, but I, I guess it's not important enough for him to step in into action. Of course not. It's easier uh, for a politician to talk rather than do something. So it costs Barack Obama no political capital to get up and speak out about the violence. Like, this is terrible. This violence is terrible. All the while, he's the one presiding over the most violent entity known to mankind, the yeah. U.S. federal government. Well, and... You know, the federal government actually winds up benefiting from giving away all of these bear cats. They can buy new material. Because, well, not only that, all of the bear cats and MRAPs and other things that are given away by DHS have the DHS logo on them, which means that DHS can use them whenever they want to. Good point. Yeah, that is one of the terms that the local police department had to agree to when they accepted the bear cat is that when the feds want to use it, they can come in and commandeer at any time they want. There's more on the way here. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. Lots of things change in life. Here's one thing that has it. For over 20 years, Lumber Liquidators has been the home of unbelievable flooring deals. And right now, those deals are even better. Take your pick of gorgeous pre-finished hardwoods like cherry, oak, and hickory, or an incredible 149 a square foot, plus loads of major hardwood flooring brands at a crazy 40% off. Even get great deals on laminate, bamboo, and vinyl floors. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 12-month financing available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, Buzzbox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 15th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.64 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,303 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $505. Antiwar.com reports, Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Malaki, after a multi-day attempt to retain power that included deploying tanks into the Baghdad Green Zone and filing lawsuits claiming constitutional violations, has finally agreed to step down and end his eight years in office. Maliki gave a speech yesterday announcing he is stepping down and endorsing his successor, Prime Minister-designate Haider Abadi, who is also a member of the Dawa Party. Maliki has maintained that as the Dawa leader, only he was constitutionally allowed to be prime minister designate, though his overwhelming unpopularity, even within his own party, meant he had no chance of forming a government. That task will now fall on a body who seems to have enough votes to do so. Whether a body will be any different in practice than Maliki was is another matter entirely. Both are members of the same political movement with roughly analogous backstories, and the primary difference is that Maliki has fallen out of favor both domestically and internationally nationally after eight years of failures, while a body is, at the very least, a fresh face. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. 
The New York Times reports President Obama on Thursday called for an end to the violence in Ferguson, Missouri, decrying actions by both the police and by protesters. Hours later, the Missouri governor, Jay Nixon, ordered the state highway patrol to take over security operations from local law enforcement. Clashes between heavily armored police and furious protesters in Ferguson have defined the aftermath of a police officer's fatal shooting of an unarmed teenager on Saturday, and the latest moves come as federal and state officials scrambled to quell the growing crisis. Alarm is rising across the country at images of a mostly white police force in a predominantly African-American community aiming military-style weapons at protesters and firing tear gas and rubber bullets. Criticism of the police response, already heavy because officials have refused to name the officer involved in the shooting, intensified after two journalists were arrested Wednesday night while recharging their phones and working on articles at a local McDonald's. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, the Obama administration has halted missile shipments to Israel and a huge new diplomatic row, which some officials are calling a very serious rupture is emerging after the Wall Street Journal revealed Israel was taking U.S. weapons to use in Gaza without the permission of the White House. According to U.S. officials, the Israeli Defense Ministry was getting arms directly from the Pentagon stockpile in their country without asking either the White House or the U.S. State Department's permission. This this was done in spite of the arms coming concurrent with direct U.S.-Israeli talks on another $225 million in U.S. funding for their Iron Dome system. One U.S. diplomat noted, We were blindsided, while others said they were particularly concerned that Israel took artillery instead of precision-guided arms to use during their bombardment of civilian areas of Gaza. It was particularly galling that Israel took the arms without asking the White House, since the billions of dollars in annual U.S. aid has essentially bankrolled the entire Gaza war, and having burned through all their U.S.-provided arms and ammo, they simply went to the Pentagon warehouse and grabbed some more. Pentagon officials are trying to downplay the incident, saying that Israel didn't need permission of the White House or State Department to take the arms. Whether or not that is strictly true is unclear, but doing so was clearly irksome to the administration. In addition to stopping the shipments, the State Department announced a new review of all arms shipments to Israel, though they insisted the timing of this was coincidental and was simply a function of concern about the invasion of Gaza. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In this week's Onion Tips section, five easy ways to adapt your deplorable and parasitic existence for the upcoming Armageddon. Tip one, focus on preparing your home for any number of disaster situations, which still probably won't take your mind off of your impending death or the myriad mistakes you made in your short, pitiful life. Tip two, make sure your linens are clean prior to the upcoming catastrophe, as these are likely the very same sheets on which you will soon be slowly asphyxiated. Tip three, take some time off work and spend your last days free from the bonds of the oppressive machine that was just about the only thing giving you a purpose to your otherwise insignificant days. Tip four, spend your final waking minutes before the end of the world with your family, knowing full well you'd rather be doing a number of other gratifying yet completely depraved things. Right, sicko? In other news, a smitten foot fetishist thinks these may be the two. A woman and her gay best friend go on another one of their little adventures, and a dead daughter would have wanted a $220 million liability settlement. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, Ian here. Alan. And Daryl. We've been talking quite a bit about Ferguson, Missouri, although I feel like we pretty much maxed that one out. If you think there's something we've missed at this point, some new development that we haven't heard about, please feel free to call in, bring it up. Of course, one of the things that hasn't really been covered as far as the police equipment that is uh, being in use in Ferguson, are there robots involved with the policing in Ferguson? Do they have 
you know, the robot bomb. Like police units, some of them will have, the larger cities will have the robot bomb units that can go into a place. And Yeah, Ferguson can, is right outside of St. Louis. Yeah. So Ferguson might not have the robot bomb but St. detonator, Louis does. but St. Louis certainly would. So that's one of the robots that police have been known to use in recent times. But are we going to see more robotic policing? And I mean, RoboCop, right? And they just redid RoboCop. Uh, you know, that was this. a horrible movie when it was made in 1475. 1475. <laughs> um, I know it wasn't that long ago, but... Yeah. 30 years ago. It was a bad movie then. So you've got that idea of the robots providing policing services. And at this point, I don't know if that would be worse or better than what we currently have. I I mean, I really don't. I, sometimes the police today seems so robotic. I, I don't really know if we'd be worse off with robots at this point. Your, your thoughts are certainly welcome. 855-450-FREE. And Ellen... You've been holding on to a story since last week about artificial intelligence that we didn't really have a chance to get into, so let's do that if you've got it ready. Okay, yeah, I actually have two things. Uh, one is a news article from MSN.com, and another is from the source itself, IBM, which is the company that developed this new chip. And um, so so the article, as I said, is from MSN.com, and uh, says, International Business Machines Corp. unveiled... A brain-like computer chip on Thursday that is the size of a postage stamp and capable of processing massive amounts of data while handling inputs from many different sources. The announcement comes one month after IBM unveiled a $3 billion investment over the next five years in chip research and development to find a game-changing breakthrough that can help revive its slumping hardware unit. Hmm. Unlike most chips, which operate on pre-written paths... IBM's version processes data in real time and is capable of dealing with ambiguity, the company said. It runs on the energy equivalent of a hearing aid. Built in Samsung Electro Machines Company, uh, the 28 nanometer process technology, the chip only consumes 70 megawatts of energy. A pro- megawatts? It may be smaller than that. It's a uh, lowercase m. Milliwatts. Milliwatts, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Megawatt would be a lot of energy. <laughs> okay, well, that that was a mistake on my part. A product of almost a decade of research, the chip That's aims... That's less than a watt. Yeah. 70 megawatts, or milliwatts is uh, less than a watt. A, pr- a product of almost a decade of research, the chip aims to bridge the divide between existing computers and the brain's high cognitive power and low energy use. After years of collaboration with IBM, we are now a step closer to building a computer similar to our brain, said Professor Mm. Rajit Manohar at Cornell Tech, where the chip was designed. The chip contains one million programmable neurons and could allow a thermometer to scan and smell chemical signals and deliver a diagnosis or help a search and rescue robot to identify people in need during a disaster, the company said. So that's uh, the ideal use for this, but I imagine... So they're claiming this is a step towards the robot brain. I mean, that's they're, they're not quite saying this is to the point where they're going to be able to uh, emulate or be exactly the same as a human brain, but this is a big step. They're claiming, the scientists are saying this is a step in that direction. Uh, yes, with one million programmable uh, neurons, I, I believe that that is a... That's much better than any computing power that we have now. I'm just impressed with how small it is. Right. The size of a postage stamp and apparently can work with ambiguity, which no computer has been able to do before. What does that mean? I have no idea. That means that it can take data from several different sources and kind of uh, determine uh, a consequence from that. So, like, it it can take in information. Like, if you had this... So uh, sort chip. of what I did earlier where I read two different news stories and then compiled them together a decision about to it. Right. figure out what exactly happened. So uh, there, there's a picture on the article, and uh, basically it says that if you have this chip in your phone, you could basically point it at something, and it will take in all of the different aspects of this thing and tell you what it is. Hmm. And, uh, you know, this is really an unprecedented scale, like... Uh, in the in 2011, they already have that. By were, the way, recognizing like phones can recognize certain uh, things. Obviously, barcode scanners, but there's I think something that you can like hold the phone up and point it at products, and I believe that exists, and it can it can recognize it. Oh, there's a 
thing, well, I, I'm not sure if it's the same as what you're talking about, but I've got an app on my phone to where I can scan a barcode. Yep. It tells me what the product is and then shows me prices from like five major websites. Yeah, I'm not talking about a barcode scanner. I think I've heard of some sort of th- product, some sort of uh, app that will allow you to take a picture of something and that it will try to figure out what that thing is just based on what the picture looks like. Right. I, I know that uh, the Google bots have something to where you can upload a picture and it will show you all of the other websites that have that photo. Mm. And help you determine where that photo came from. Right. There's actually a video on this website showing um, it's basically just like a fountain with some grass. And then there's two people riding bicycles around this roundabout. And if you play through the video, it will show uh, like the the image is like focusing in on the two people. And uh, this is because the chip will actually pick out the most interesting aspects of a video or uh, an image or something and, like, Mm. tell you what they are. And it processes these portions of uh, interesting video to determine uh, what they are and actually uh, give you an analysis. So um, I guess that's one aspect of working with the ambiguity. The the police could use that to uh, scan over all these camera feeds. Like, for instance, one of the big critiques about the uh, the Great Britain installation of 4 million CCTV cameras or something ridiculous like that all across London and elsewhere. Uh, one of the big critiques has been, who the hell's going to watch all that? There's right. nobody that, there's, you know, you can't have enough people hired to watch 4 million CCTV cameras. One of the ideas was to crowdsource it, put all the videos online and let a bunch of uh, local busybodies and snitches spend their time, their free time, uh, sitting and watching video feeds, which, you know, I guess that's an idea. And then, of course, the other one would be to have some sort of computer analyzing the video feeds and determining what it thought would be criminal activity. So maybe that's one of the things they might be using this for. But they could also use this to just compile facial recognition. Yeah, and And I think there's been a buildup with that, with the facial recognition technology. Like, they they even have that on Facebook. Yeah, Yeah, they they do. do. It works. I've posted pictures before, and then Facebook goes through like the 12 pictures that I post all at once and is like, do you want to tag Ian in five of these? Do you want to tag this person? Do you want to tag Mm -hmm. this person? And I'm like, no, don't want to tag any of them. (laughs) And then there's always the one face that I don't recognize. And then upon further review, I realize that it's a face that's on somebody's Uh (laughs) T-shirt. Yeah, so this is actually a huge step because in 2011, uh, the best technology they had was only 256 programmable neutrons. And now neurons. it's a million? Yes, neurons. and now it's a million. I mean, I don't know what a programmable neuron means, but going from 256 to a million in three years is a pretty big jump. Right. Um, see, I, I believe what they mean by programmable neuron is that uh, it takes in information and uh, can, you know, form... A, a complete story out of that. I'm, yeah, I'm not, at some point, the the tech in an adre- event driven fashion is what they the term that they use. So yeah, at some point, the uh, the mainstream media explanation of the technology breaks down. Right. And you know, a programmable neuron. I mean, what what does that even mean? That that alone, I think you'd probably have to dig in and, and do some research. And I don't. Know, but most people aren't going to dig in, and they're oh wow, that's <laughs> impressive. Cores on the same chip communicate with one another via an on-chip event-driven network. Fancy. It sounds very fancy, and uh, it could be used for evil, that's for sure. Uh, as long as we've got governments around, all this robot technology is very scary, I think. 855 450 free will continue here in a moment. You can take control and share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them 
them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, health care, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster call right now 800-981-7590 800-981-7590 get out of debt now 800-981-7590 So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here and bring up anything that you want. Maybe you want to talk about... The rise of AI. Ellen has been explaining to us a new IBM chip that can operate at uh, like a mm, two-thirds of a watt, basically, and it can process a crazy amount of information. It's very, very small, the size of a postage stamp, and uh, that it has a million programmable neurons. And not that that means anything to me, because we don't know what a programmable neuron is, nor do I really want to find out, because it's probably too technically uh, detailed. But the comparison is interesting. Apparently, in 2011, the similar, you know, the pre- predecessor to this model, a predecessor to this model, had 256 programmable neurons. Was that correct, Ellen? Yeah, and um, I, I would just say that you, I guess, you could relate it to the human brain because every time, trying to do, every yeah. time you learn something, there's a few neurons that are programmed to re- respond to a certain stimulus. Mm-hmm. So it basically can. It just means that it can take in information and learn from that. 
a lot more information. Going from 256 to 1 million is a huge jump, and we're going to continue seeing jumps like that over time. Uh, certainly, technology has been subject to. Was it? Is it more? Not Moore's law. It's um, I forget what it's called the right now. The three laws of robotics. No, there's the one law that uh, that specifies that over every 18 months, that technology will roughly double. And I'm forgetting what that is right now, but there's a name for it. I'm sure. Oh, I, I know the one you're talking yeah. about. It's just going up exponentially. Correct. Um, now, the one thing that has been pointed out about that particular law is that it's an observation over time, and odds are good that it's going to speed up also. So it may not be 18 months. It may be down to 12 months or something like that. Right. Well, I feel like every time we create better technology, we're getting closer to the point in time where technology can design itself. And that would be, I believe, uh, what is what is called by Ray Kurzweil, this sort of futurist roboticist guy as the, uh, man, I'm really spacing on terms tonight. That would be the the combo of humans singularity? and singularity. Thank you very much. And That's it is exactly Moore's Law. It is Moore's Law. Okay. Well, that's good. My memory isn't totally shot. Hey, you want to get some free coffee? How about a pound of it for free? Coffee.freetalklive.com. All you have to do is pay the the uh, the shipping cost, and you get a pound of some awesome coffee. It's shade grown, 100 percent uh, organic, and top one percent grade Arabica. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You'll learn about Buzzbox Coffee. They do something special that those other high-end coffees don't do. They've actually got a program set up that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op. And Free Talk Live is attempting to recruit listeners like you to check out BuzzBox Coffee. They think you're really going to like the product. That's why they're going to give you a pound for free. You just pay the shipping cost at coffee.freetalklive.com. And for every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com, we'll be able to finance microloans, one microloan for every 10 listeners through World Vision to help change people's lives and make better lives uh, around the world in really tough places to live. So you can not only get great coffee and get a pound for free by paying the shipping cost at coffee.freetalklive.com, but you can also help make people's lives better at the same time. So again, that's coffee.freetalklive.com. The Singularity, thank you very much. I should have remembered that one. We've talked about it a number of times here on Free Talk Live. The idea that at some point... And, and it does seem to be that it will be inevitable that at some point computer technology, artificial intelligence, will reach the equivalent of the human brain in its intellectual capacity. And that at that point, uh, it will surpass humanity and will be able to do what you suggested, Ellen, which is essentially program its own upgrades from that point forward. Uh, and the idea is that is the singularity. And right. Then at that point, what good will humans really be uh, to the machine race? Well, batteries. Humans I... will become batteries. <laughs> I've seen the movie. I know what happens. So have any of you seen iRobot? Yes. So that was actually originally a book written by Isaac Asimov, who also made the three laws of robotics, which I mentioned earlier. Which but you is didn't the... tell us what they were. So what okay. are they? If you have So uh, the first one is a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Which, of course, we know that every robot movie, I mean, that most all robot movies uh, that are rated over PG-13 shows robots breaking the first rule. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Um, if, if you're watching something like... I don't know the Matrix. Then you know that pretty much. I Robot was another blows one. Blows it the out Matrix. of the water. Yeah. Terminator. Robocop. Robocop. Yeah. <laughs> so the second law is a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Hmm. So they have to obey human law, except for when people say like, "Hey, go strangle that person." Like they're right. not allowed to follow that. And then the third law is a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Mm. It's very nice. A nice set of rules, but I suspect right. the U.S. Uh, government will not be implementing those. Hold on. So no, but I, I could very easily cause a robot to self-destruct on the grounds of causing him to violate all of the laws at once. How's that? Well, the first law is that he cannot injure a human. Okay. The second law is that he must obey any orders given to it by a human. Right. And the third law is that it must protect its own existence as long as it does not conflict with yeah. the first or second law. So you give the robot an order to either destroy itself or to kill all humans, and then... 
from over-processing, trying to figure out how to follow the orders given to it by a human, it would therefore self-destruct. Wait, but it has to protect its own existence. Right, but no, it would just overheat. And I, I don't, I don't think it's really that, that confusing. I, I mean, mean, you're it, telling it. Hold on, you're telling it to either kill itself or kill all humans. Well, right. Obviously, it would say I cannot obey either of those orders. Right, but it but must yes, it, obey every order given to it by a human wait, unless is, it violates the first. So telling it to destroy itself does not violate the first correct. law. And because the only other choice would be to kill a human, it would ha- it would have to kill itself. Right, but it also has to protect its own existence. But only to the point where it doesn't kill humans, right? So if the order given to it by a human would be to either kill humans or kill yourself, obviously the robot, if it were following the rules, would kill itself. Right. By and, choice. You know, I mean, hope, these laws, they sound harmless enough. And, you know, I think that, you know, if if this was actually applicable to robots, which I don't think it's really going to be because, you know, you can program robots any way you want to. Sure. But... I mean, it's science fiction. It would it would still end badly for people. I mean, as as you probably saw in the movie, you know, uh, robots end up overprotecting people to the point to where they can't even function normally. And you know, I'm just hoping that something like that doesn't happen. Although, kind of seems like that's the road that we're heading down. Well, uh, you know, it's a it's an interesting road, and we don't know where it's going to end up because, uh, like I was saying, if the government is around, then robots will be a real threat to our freedom. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And right now, you've got companies like iRobot, which on one hand are doing cool things with, like, the vacuum cleaning robots. Yay for that. It's a great idea. The Roomba. Yeah. Unfortunately, they also have a military division. And so when you buy cool robots like the Roomba, you're also funding military robotic hardware development, which... Yeah, that kind of gives me pause. I wouldn't right. really be interested in sending money to iRobot. Well, I think they're they're already uh, implementing that on drones and such. Like they have uh, what vacuum technology? No, not vacuum technology, <laughs> but advanced technology like identifying people, identifying sure. situations. Um, you know, just stuff that basically invades people's privacy. We will come back with more. And yes, uh, you may be seeing drones flying about your city skies sooner rather than later as well. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck, or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. 
With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control right here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can bring up whatever you want, whether it's the Ferguson, uh, Missouri police state situation that's been developing there over the last almost entire week. Or you can talk about uh, artificial intelligence. How close are we to the singularity? I mean, some have said we're 20 years out from the singularity happening. Uh, I'd say 10. Yeah, nobody really knows for sure. And, of course, as time goes on, computer processing power becomes more and more powerful and cheaper to operate and also lower electricity requirements to operate it. And Ellen was telling us about a new IBM development, which is considered a breakthrough level kind of development where... You know, they're essentially trying to emulate the human brain. I mean, it's I'm, smaller and faster than anything else. Yep. It's, uh, it sounds pretty amazing. And we'll get back into the discussion. You're welcome to join in here toll free. Even if it's your first time calling Free Talk Live, we've got plenty of time for you. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And don't forget, you can reach us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Now, if you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, check out Modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits like a double digit increase in short term memory fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Modafinil from ModUp.net, how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. Over at ModUp.net, they make it affordable for you to take advantage of the benefits of Modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name, but don't mistake low prices for an inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the brand inver- uh, branded version. Go to modup.net and pay with Bitcoin to get a 33% discount. Uh, and again, Bitcoin is an awesome option for you. But you know whether you're paying with Bitcoin or not, you can still use our code FTL and get 10 free tablets with your order. Now remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It is your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So do your research and check out modup.net for world-class service at a great price for Modafinil. M-O-D-U-P, modup.net. Uh, of course, no, more news. You're going to see more news coming out about artificial intelligence. I've got a related story, this story from Extreme Tech claims that by 2025, sex bots will be commonplace. 
According to a new report that looks at how continuing improvements to artificial intelligence and robotics will impact society, they claim that sex, uh, robotic sex partners will become commonplace by 2025. A large portion of the report also focuses on how AI, artificial intelligence, and robotics will impact both blue and white-collar workers, with about 50% of the polled experts stating robots will displace more human jobs than they create by 2025. <laughs> now, what's so funny about that? I, I was just combining the two paragraphs that you read mm -hmm. about sex bots and then robotic workers replacing human jobs. Right, where are the and prostitutes going to work prosti now? Like robot <laughs> prostitutes. This is an interesting point, right? I mean, so prostitution is the oldest profession. And is it possible that the oldest profession will be put out of business by robot sex bots? You and know, then who's going to clean the robots between... That, customers. I guess you would need either another robot for that or uh, maybe an actual human. Maybe being. the robot self-cleaning. Could be. You know, Could I be. think that would be the next big development in sex bots. <laughs> well, not to mention, like, if these things do become commonplace and popular, I bet that the human population is slowly going Gonna to go, go down. down throughout the years. That's a good point. I mean, a lot of people are concerned with overpopulation. I think it's a bunch of BS. There's plenty of room in the world for uh, for more humans to be made. But nonetheless, I, I think, Ellen, you know, it's an astute observation. If robots are commonplace for sexual purposes, that certainly is going to lead to fewer uh, children being Well, being there's born. already things that people can buy that sort of simulate this. You just don't have right, necessarily the lifelike. full body of... Well, they do have those, Daryl. They have the, uh, what do they call them? Sex dolls, I think is what they are. They right, they are do. They're very expensive. I, they're, I'm thinking, you know, some of the smaller things that are easier to hide in one's Some sort of device. Drawer. Yes, I see what you're saying. Some kind of sex device. But yeah, as Ellen's pointing out, that's not the same thing. I mean, look, I'm not in, interested in a sex bot whatsoever because for me... A sexual, you know, encounter with another person is about the other person feeling good, and you know, right. the robot. At least in the beginning, the robot will not appear to care about that. Or, uh, but then maybe that, they could program the robot to wind up caring. Well, right. that, that's the larger question, right? Is when does AI get to the point where? And I think a lot of people are going to have to struggle with this in the future. When does AI get to the point to where? They have the same rights, and they actually do have feelings. I mean, or, you know, some sort of programmable equivalent to feelings. You and know, I think there's actually a movie made about this called AI, Artificial Intelligence, and uh, it went over the same thing. Like, I've heard that's really sad, that movie. Uh, it is. It's terribly sad. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Oh, is that the one gosh, with Robin it, it Williams? Uh, Jude right Law. There Jude Law is in it. And it's a Steven Spielberg film. I know that much about um, it. Some little kid, right? Yeah. I, I forget kid. who the actor is that plays the little kid. But yeah, they're both robots. And um, also in this movie, sex bots are covered. And oh, they really? basic yeah, they basically are programmed to uh, have like positive sexual responses. So, you know, I, I feel like this has all been predicted and played out already. And mm -hmm. Eventually, this science fiction is just going to become a reality. I'm thinking of Bicentennial Man that... Robin was, Williams movie. Yeah. It was a Robin Williams movie to where he was an android, and he was you know fighting in the courts to be recognized hmm. as having rights. That's interesting. I think that's a big question, and I, I think that, you know, not so much... It's not so much a question when it comes to the sex bot... <laughs> But it, it does evoke that larger issue of at what point, you know, it, you know, right now, if I play a video game and I kill some sort of computer opponent in the video game, I don't feel bad about it. But could AI get to the point or when will it get to the point where, you know, I, I, all of a sudden taking someone's life in a video game becomes significant in some way? And, and w when does the military wind up somehow incorporating their drones to a video game to where people think they're playing a video game. No, they're game actually killing real and people. And taking out targets, but they're actually killing real people. It's a scary idea. Yeah, I know. That's that's terrifying. It might actually be, you know, that might happen someday. You never know. I it mean, that would be terribly immoral. But to go back to what you're saying. It probably, just hold on. It probably wouldn't be very likely because a lot of that is probably just flying time where you're flying from wherever the takeoff point is to wherever the target is. It may not actually hold gamers' attention. Um, so they would have to really kind of work with that to make it more mm. interesting. Well, if you're in a densely populated area, good point. Yeah. But to go back to what you're saying about like 
if you were to kill a computer a computer simulated uh character in a video game uh wouldn't wouldn't that be like destroying an entire database like the the character would have to have all of this information stored like it would have to have memories and personality mm -hmm. in order to have emotions and you know who's to say that they even you know are real emotions or how is that like the defining uh thing of what makes a person a person yeah all of these are big questions and uh i think they're going to be hard to answer how yeah, do you define that animals have emotions as well but we and don't not, treat them as cool humans well but we also don't at the same time uh you know if the animal's cute enough then you know we do treat them differently right than but that's like having a little tamagotchi video game you know it's like it's cute and it's fun but you can always throw it away and you don't feel bad about it there's no repercussions that's my question though is at what point will people start to feel bad about doing things that they take for granted with artificial intelligence today. Well, after the movie Toy Story came out, people felt bad about throwing toys away Is that right? because they thought, well, maybe my toys really we'll do come, come to, to life, life oh, when I fall no. asleep. Oh, really? Are you telling a personal story, Daryl? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> Is that where all of the stuffed animals from the vending machines went? <laughs> All right. We'll come I, back. I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> Reach for the sky. Toll free number 855 450 free. You can control here. More about the sex bots here in a moment because apparently they're coming in more ways than one. It's Free Talk Live. <laughs> Lots of things change in life. Here's one thing that has it. For over 20 years, Lumber Liquidators has been the home of unbelievable flooring deals. And right now, those deals are even better. Take your pick of gorgeous pre-finished hardwoods like cherry, oak, and hickory. Or an incredible 149 a square foot. Plus, loads of major hardwood flooring brands at a crazy 40% off. Even get great deals on laminate, bamboo, and vinyl floors. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 12-month financing available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Hi everyone, I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenevention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenevention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenevention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F E E N P H O N E.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Plenty of time for your call if you dial in right now and bring up whatever you want, whether it's sex bots, the future of artificial intelligence, Ferguson, Missouri, the police state, Whatever you want to talk about goes here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You send the request. We will acknowledge it, and then it'll be easy for you to contact us through Skype from that point forward. Uh, with you tonight, it's Ian here. Alan. And Daryl. Don't forget to check more Daryl out on his website, fpp.cc. Uh, you can actually not only get Daryl in written form, but also Daryl in audio form. You, uh, you've, you've got some uh, blog posts that you make, and you also do regular radio production, like yes. your long-form show, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, as well as a five-minute newscast seven days a week. Yes, and I am fast approaching the 200th episode or edition. Wow. The, the 200th daily newscast you've blown through half a year at this point yes and uh, it's an amazing level of dedication and i think probably one of the more useful podcasts because as far as the liberty community there's so many liberty podcasts out there it's hard to even keep track of them all but uh, there aren't very many that are doing a daily five minute newscast uh the folks over at the liberty beat are doing a great job but they're still only i think they're only doing five days a week five days uh, a week so you're the only one doing seven days and it's it's awesome folks can donate to you is there a donate link at uh, fppradio.com yeah uh you could actually go to fans.fppradio.com that's f-a-n-s dot fppradio.com Excellent. Let's get back into it here. Uh, whatever's on your mind goes. We were talking about the sex bots. Maybe we can get back into that, but let's go first to Charles. He's in West Virginia listening to WVTS. Hey, Charles. Hey, guys. And Ellen. Hey, go ahead with your hey. thoughts. The things that are going on in uh, Vermont, Missouri, is a little bit different than the experience me and my brother had there. Uh, about 20 years ago, we uh, made trips to Wyoming to hunt and fish, and we decided uh, one year that next time we went, we was going to stop fishing the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. So the next time going out, uh, we got off, finally got off the six lanes going each way uh, at St. Louis, and got on this exit, and the road kept getting narrower and narrower, and after a while, we ended up in the city at the right and in now. Which seemed like a kind of a nice little out of a big city borough. And there's a couple of guys standing on the street, one black, one white. So we stopped and asked them if there was a sports store around there where uh, we might uh, get somebody to take us fishing. Well, go down here and down this, and it happened to be uh, Fluorescent Street, which we thought was kind of catchy. So we go down to where they told us, go in, and there's sporting goods just barely aisles enough to walk through and didn't see anybody so I asked if anybody home boy well, we said yeah back here so we walked back and there's kind of a head sticking up over a counter and he started standing up and he kept standing up there same like for 10 minutes and when he got finally stood up <laughs> he was six foot eight Woo, that's a big boy yeah he was and uh, kind of intimidating there for a minute <laughs> two white boys in a strange city that uh 
there's a big, big black man standing there asking, what can I do for you? Well, uh, we'd like to go fishing in the Mississippi. Well, y'all can go fishing, but uh, you probably won't do any good. It flooded that year mm. in the spring. Well, this is September, and it still hadn't straightened out. So, uh, first question, when you open your mouth, I'll wait from here. Where are you from? Well, West Virginia. The next question is usually, are you looking for a job? But, uh, yeah, how, what are y'all doing out here? Well, we're looking to go fishing. Well, can't help you there in the river here. It's explained it to us. What part of West Virginia are you from? Well, South Central. Well, what's close to? So we told him the town was the biggest thing it is to a town around here, close to. And a big smile come on that big, mean-looking dude's face and asked us if we'd ever heard of a little town that's not a town, it's just a place. We back out here that uh, welcome uh, to and thank you for visiting signs both on the same post. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, we we know where that is. It's about 25, 30 miles from us. Well, you know this guy that's a logging contractor. Yeah, we know him. And he went through these six names. Uh, do you happen to know any of them? Well, yeah, we know all of them. Four of them were black. Two whites worked for him, and one of them just happened to be a real good friend of mine. Uh, so uh, It's a small world, man. We talked over for a little bit, and he uh, said, y'all uh, care to have a beer? Well, yeah, might as well. So <laughs> he walks down and closes the door, don't bother to lock it or anything. We walk down about two doors, and here's a little tavern. We walk in, and it's a nice little place. It looks out behind in the country somewhere. So a few people in there. Uh, so we sit down, have a beer. Start talking. He asked us if we ever heard of the Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah, we've heard of it. We've been by it several times. Where'd you ever fish it? No. Where would you like to? Well, maybe it looks kind of like a fun lake more than a fishing lake from what we've seen. Are y'all looking for the wrong part of the lake? So, uh, like long story short, less than an hour later, we're in his truck. We're headed for the Lake of the Ozarks. <laughs> and we get to the lake. We get to the Lake of the Ozarks, and we pass all the tourists and everything in the docks and drive back up in, way back in the lake and back in this coast, a little place there with a dock out from it, and we go in and go down through the floor and down under the dock. There's a 22-foot boat with a 150-horsepower Merc engine on the back of it. Yeah, you met the right guy. Took you, took you right to where you uh, where you needed to be, huh? Where the we're all away from the tourists. Got the your own little uh, your own little nook and cranny there. Oh, hey, we got in that boat and he opened that thing up and just the back end of us touching water for way for forty minutes and stopped in this little cove. We started fishing. We caught bass. We caught stripers. It got dark. We started catfishing. But we didn't catch any of those fifty pound catfish. Biggest one I caught was seventeen pounds. My brother caught one twenty two. Uh, it's a heartwarming story, Charles. Is it? Uh, are you going anywhere else with it? Yeah, uh, to Wyoming. <laughs> After we got back, the guy wouldn't even take any money. Hmm. So uh, we we talked, and he uh, coached basketball and stuff at a YMCA down there. So we asked him, "How's the YMCA doing?" Well, doing pretty good, but could do better. Just use this and use that. So. We chipped in two hundred fifty dollars each, and told him to take that and put it on the for the YMCA. Oh, that's nice. The big old man uh, kind of almost uh, peered up there for a little bit, and he couldn't hardly speak. He said, "Y'all, y'all are just like the people that I met back there." He said, "Them were some of the nicest people I was ever around." He said, "I spent three years there." He said, "I spent a year just trying to get away." Talking about in West I Virginia, said, is he? He said, "Yeah, yeah." And uh, we talked there for a while, and uh, we headed on for Wyoming. Well, we got to Wyoming, place where we'd stayed out there before. It's a little place uh, out uh, in the direction of Jackson Hole, 75 miles inside of Jackson Hole. Okay. 300, and population 301. So the 
some of the guys we stayed with out there before we stayed with, so uh, they talked us in, and we'd go down to the bar and have a beer. So we'd go down to this little bar down there and run into this guy who has a logging job out there. And we get to talking, uh, you're from West Virginia, yeah? Second question, you looking for a job? No, <laughs> we're out here. <laughs> we're taking a vacation. First vacation we've ever had, we're going to take a vacation. And he asked us, do you know where this place is? Well, it's the same place that the guy in Missouri had asked us about. And we're, we're in Wyoming now. Wow. And this guy knew exactly where it was, knew the same, had worked for the same long <laughs> time. <laughs> Like I said, man, it's a small world. That's a touching story, Charles. Thanks for sharing it tonight, man. I do I do really appreciate hearing from you. Let's see if we can get Jen in here in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live. Jen, go quick. Hi. I just wanted to bring up the fact that I am completely dumbfounded by uh, how many parents don't know that you don't have to vaccinate your kids before you put them into public schools this year. And I mean, that's in a year. But I was talking to a 12-year-old girl today. She's friends of a friend's, you know, daughter or whoever, and she said, I, I need to have vaccines so I can be in athletics. And I said, no, honey, you don't. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure they want people I, to believe that, and I know that that, I yeah. don't know if what you're saying is true everywhere. I know there's, uh, you know, different school systems and well, different I, rules, but I'd recommend yeah, keeping your kids I, out of the government school entirely. I thank you for the call tonight, Jen. We are yeah. out of time. We'll be back. Uh, tomorrow night, you can join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Don't forget Daryl's website, fpp.cc, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, freetalklive.com. As of today, the average cost of a pack of cigarettes has gone up to two hand jobs and a stick of beef jerky. For more, we go now to Onion News Network prison economics expert Hal Rogan. The prison economy runs on cigarettes. They're involved in every economic transaction at some stage, mm. from contract killings to naked woman picture acquisition. Right. That's why we've got shampoo at six batteries. We've Whoa. got tattoos at 50 commissary stamps. Now, for what it's really like out there in the market, let's check in with major cigarette trader Big Dap Ramirez. Big Dap, nice to see you again. Thanks, Rick. Good to see you. What's happening, Hal? How's it going, Big Dap? Now, it's obviously a boom time for cigarettes right now. I am getting a lot of hands But with jobs. prices this high, analysis shows you're going to be seeing a drop-off in real sales soon as consumers turn to smoke and grass fejos. Look, we've been through this before. The market teaches us not to panic. Mm. But if I learn anything in this game, it's that a wife or girlfriend will pass off a few decks in the boneyard. Supply will normalize, and we'll see cigarettes returning to a single hand job or less. Let's hey, big dap. Best of luck to you. We'll keep checking in on the story with Hal throughout the day. Thanks, Rick. Moving on to some happier news. In Atlanta today, two snitches were beaten to death. This is the Onion News Network. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at 